All right, looks like we are live. Hello, everybody. Um, wow. Okay, we've uh, we've we've definitely got some people on here. So, hi. How is everybody tonight? Um, okay, so it has been a couple of days, which maybe we'll I don't know if we'll talk at all about that. Maybe a little bit, but um, we are here to discuss authenticity. What does that mean? What does it not mean? What do people think it means? Um, and what does that look like for our lives as creators? Uh, and we've kind of got a variety of like lengths of time that we've been on YouTube and channel sizes and things. So I think there could be some interesting things to talk about. Hope everybody is doing all right and taking care of yourselves. Jess, unfortunately, will not be able to join us this evening. Um, but um, Maybe if, if you know if, if you see this, Jess. Hi, we miss you. We love you. Uh, if everybody wants to go around and kind of briefly introduce yourselves, I mean, I feel like probably most people know who most of you are, but they're all linked down below. But yeah, go, Izzy, if you guys first, I'll go first. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hey, I'm Izzy from Happy for Now. I also co-host Chapter Three Podcast with Bethany, which I never remember to promo, but I'm remembering now <laughs> for once in my life. Um, yeah, I've got the smallest channel here, so I'm really excited to like hear what you guys think about it because I already have a lot of thoughts <laughs> about this whole topic and <laughs> things that get thrown around. So yeah, I mostly talk about romance books and I also talk about manga. Manga. Yeah. Manga. Is it my turn? Yes. Yeah. How do I always get confused? Because you know in Zoom, like it never looks the same on anybody's thing. So when we oh. ever get these things, I'm like, but how do you know what order to go in? Because we're, Cause we're stream all yard it. No, because StreamYard isn't like Zoom. It does you can actually tell. That's a good point though. I haven't thought that. I'm so traumatized by Zooming that I get confused. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Ashley. My channel name is Bookish Realm. Um, what else am I supposed to say? No stuff you read what you well you could tell people your job also okay so i read That's a little important. bit of everything literally a little bit of everything um i am a librarian i work specifically in collection development as a selector for youth materials so for my library system i purchase everything for ages zero to 18 which is a big job a lot of what we've been talking about lately is the book bans and challengings that are happening in the good old U.S. of A. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot. A lot. Is it me? I think you guys are going to fight over who gets to go next. <laughs> I guess you guys can pick whatever. I don't care. I'm Mara from Books Like Whoa. I read a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm painting my nails because, nice. you know, we're just having gal pal time. So that's so authentic. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'm just trying to create some real connection here with the audience. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have like an impromptu sleepover while we discuss authenticity. <laughs> yeah. Well, Perfect. me and my best friend just had pizza and rosé. So I feel like. Sounds so nice. On the way that for a good nice. sleepover. I am Alexa Dunn. I am an author tuber slash booktuber. I'm an author. Um, so I balance both ends of like, I, I like to talk about books because I like books, but I also have to be an author on the internet, which is something. I uh, make conscious choices about my brand. Um, that's so weird. And we're going to talk about it. And I've been on YouTube for five years next week. My anniversary is June 1st. So yeah. And the sun is hitting the lens of my camera, so I look euphoria esque. Just need like disco filter. <laughs> I guess that's actually a good place maybe to start. Is like how long has everybody been on? Actually, I think Alexa, me, and Mara all started around the same time because I'll I'll be five years in June as well. Five uh... years, July first. I made the channel in 2017, I in September, but I don't know when I like started started because I like pre filmed stuff. Yeah. And Ashley is our veteran. Mm -hmm. I am the veteran. I jumped on the booktube train in like 2014. I can't believe I have been on this platform for almost 10 years. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's a lot of time. A lot of time. And I just I am no G. 
<laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, I feel like you could just break down every cycle of BookTube for us. Oh, let me tell you. And <laughs> are you on for this talk? conversation <laughs> about all An oral history of BookTube. <laughs> yeah, courtesy of Ashley. Um, Maybe you could be a book talk auntie because they need to prepare. Because I'm like, you're going to have the same cycles, book talk. They're going they through. They already are. They already are. Right are. Yeah. That's so. why I refuse. I just, I just can't. Like, I get the joy, the, the quickness of it. But I'm like, y'all, I've. I've spent so much time in a book related community. It is my, I eat, live and breathe literally every single day of my life. Mm. So it's just, I can't do anything else, but yeah, I, I hopped on about 2014. I really genuinely like was not truly consistent though. Until like 2018 is when I was like, I really, really want to do this thing. And so, but I, I have been a part of the community since 2014. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I guess kind of for reference, maybe like channel sizes is useful. Jess, I know, sadly couldn't join us. I think it would have been interesting because she kind of had her channel blow up, but she, she's relatively new. Um, thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Michael is great as well. Follow him. If you like sci-fi, you should definitely follow him. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I know we have a little bit of variety. Alexa, I think you definitely have like the biggest platform by far. Yeah, for sure. Weird. Yeah. Um, she has an actual just, button. Be mean in listicle format. You know, it, it, <laughs> that video has almost a million views. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, just, hold on. <laughs> People hate me. It's great. Well, I, my biggest one, I think, is at 300 ish thousand. And it's all about classics, so I get a lot of neckbeards yelling at me about why I mentioned the fact that it's very white. <laughs> How dare! That sounds about right. Unfortunately, yeah, a lot too. Sorry, my camera has decided to be annoying. Um, it's all good. Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My biggest one is about uh, my paperweight and Oasis, and it's great because I get comments with tech support questions. I'm like I'm not tech support. Not tech support. <laughs> my biggest one is how to be a librarian and I get questions on what program should I enroll in? Like what are your reg <laughs> like I should have never made this damn video. <laughs> oh no. Can you write me a reference letter? Listen, I have gotten I'm gonna go comment that later tonight. <laughs> Actually like get out of here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thanks. Dan. Yeah. I I don't know. Like I randomly like my most viewed video is like this random review I did of a weight loss program that I don't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> but I did like it's not even book related and I swear I'm like it is my most viewed video by far. I'm like, okay. So it's weird that's weird. what YouTube chooses. And and I mean, actually that's an interesting it's an interesting point because my most viewed video is not my authentic self. Like it's a version of myself, but I purposefully was really snarky in that video. That's not my normal style. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some of you have talked to me IRL. I can be very snarky. We do know this. I am a little gentle on my YouTube channel because the babes watch the children, but I'm not like mean no. <laughs> and people think I'm horrible. Because they don't watch anything else. It's like, no, my authentic self is how, like, hot mess I am in my blogs or, like, on lives where I just, like, should be less authentic, honestly. So. Oh, <laughs> no, you're not authentic enough, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I love how people in the live are like, oh, I think I saw that <laughs> weight loss <laughs> program <laughs> review video. I'm like, I, yeah. I, 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 made it I get suggested day. it randomly. Yeah. I'm like. YouTube. It's what? Weird. It's from like I, I get suggested. Ago. I get suggested Mara's classics video a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. It does really yeah, well for I me. I do. I'm like, but I watch her other content. You're <laughs> like, I'm you also. I mean, so like, I watch this video. Who doesn't need this recommendation. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's funny because I'm like, I don't re even recommend it. I've like privated the other ones that were more positive about it. And I just left up the like review video that's like not very positive. So. I want to look this up now and know what the program is. <laughs> the comment is next to your books that make you lose weight because it makes you sad. I'm dying in this oh comment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Well, the ironic part is this has been like my journey into like, you know, like more, you know, body positivity, health at every size and not uh, being. So it's interesting that that's like my most viewed video. And it's not even like a thing that I would do now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's just weird. Speaking of, uh, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, in our authentic self. It's almost like you evolve as a human. How dare. Over time. Isn't that weird? We change? A topic I find fascinating. We're all, I don't don't want to be ageist, but we're all like uh, proper adults. Yes. Yeah. We've seen, I've seen channels where like, if someone starts it when they're a literal teenager Mm -hmm. and then they Mm -hmm. grow up. And they'll face like backlash for changing. And I'm like, no, they, they became an adult. Yeah. And I, I imagine it must be really tough to like I mean, balance I you... authenticity mm-hmm. when like you got some cringe because you did stuff when you were 16 on YouTube. Is that who you are forever? And I think some channels lean into those personas well past yeah. that actually being who they are. They, yeah, and they I do not disagree with this. By the thing that made them famous. That's like we see it all the time well it's weird when you meet people like that in person and you're like you are not (laughs) because i have met a couple people like that and i'm like you are such a different person (laughs) in person than you are whereas i don't feel like that's true like i feel like most people who've met me in person are like yeah you're like i feel like i'm pretty similar um i think i've met some of you in person um but yeah i don't know yeah. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. But yeah, I was, I, I mean, when I started my channel, I was already 30. So like, yeah. I have also changed and evolved in that time, but I can't even imagine starting as a teenager. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, I started I like right before I turned 30. So like being serious with it. So yeah, it's like, I already kind of knew, I mean, I knew who I was pretty yeah. young, but still it, a channel would be when I was 18 or 16 to now would be very different. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just read that. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what this is about, I did like an April Fool's video this year pretending to take, like I didn't talk specific companies, but like pretending to do all the sponsorships I've been offered. Cause we get offered. Some weird. of them are bad. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. And they, <laughs> they won't stop. It's like, my friends, I have never responded to your email. Stop emailing me. Yeah. 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 Hey. Well, and it's very funny when people, like, to the authenticity thing, like, people accuse uh, different people of selling out or whatever. And I'm like, I've oh. taken, I would say, like, 1% of the things that have been offered to me. Yeah. And I, like, I just turned down one for better help because my best friend is a psychologist. And it's... I ignored that one because I yeah. looked yeah. up because, because I, I vet anything. I do consider some, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, and now, I mean, I don't want to shade people who decided to take it, but just for me, yeah. like that didn't align it's with okay. something that I mm-hmm. felt like I could promote. Uh, so I didn't take it. So it's well, I, feel like... I haven't been offered them, but I use them. Like that's where, how I get my therapy because it's the only and way I can afford it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah. And it's been good. Like, I have, like, a good therapist through it. But, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see that, too, because, like, more has come out about some issues with them Mm. recently. And, like, if you've had a good experience, that's great. I just, yeah. 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 We should all take sponsorships we feel good about is, I guess, where I'm going with that. That we have personal experience with, that we can vouch for, products Mm -hmm. we would actually use. Right. That's how I feel. And you know what? Some people need to get their coin, and I get that. So, yeah. Yeah. There's no shame in that. There's Sometimes not that much. Sometimes. Well, okay, but occasionally. But, I mean, but I'm just saying to an extent. Yeah. I haven't seen any skinny tea promos on YouTube on BookTube, yeah. so I think we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, have you seen them? What are the I'm just saying, do a workout video while you <laughs> you have seen <laughs> one really? <laughs> oh, oh man. Wow. Should I tell you about my dark past and that I was in a workout video? Really? <laughs> I was in a Richard Simmons workout video. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Authentic soul. It's so weird. Yeah. In my That's deep, deep past, I, I once attempted to have a weight loss blog, but like not, I wasn't trying to lose weight. It was supposed mm-hmm. to, 
the early iteration of health at any size. I could I could have been an influencer, y'all. Uh, and then I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. And I want to write yeah. But uh, yeah, I used to work out with Richard Simmons uh, for <laughs> three years. That I feel. Oh yeah, you told me about that. I feel like that is that your like corporate fun fact when it's like something that people wouldn't it know about be. you. That's a great um, one. My That's my one. one usually is is that my father used to be a spy. Is my fun two truths and a lie? Not a lie. I mean, he was a bad one, but it just means he worked for the security services in the UK. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I can't blow anyone's cover because he did that himself. Anyway, uh, very funny stories. That's amazing. <laughs> I think this is a good jumping off so, point. Yeah, I think this is, <laughs> Heather, this is great. Um, so I agree with this, that authenticity and privacy are not the same thing. And I think this is important to discuss because I think especially on the viewer side, these two things can get conflated. Um, and and yes, I would agree. Creators owe their, do owe their viewers authenticity, but not information. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear from from all of you like how do you approach this of, and i think we have a variety of ways that we handle privacy mm -hmm. and and everything but like where is that line for you and like what kind of feedback if or pushback if you do you get if any from viewers on that do we want to just go around or do we want to whoever wants to, either way um okay so i'm a small channel here um, and I find it interesting because I've noticed shifts for myself already as I've grown from like a thousand, under a thousand, like what I was comfortable showing and sharing. I'm never not me. I mean, like Tamika's in the chat. We've hung out in person. Like I'm basically the same. I'm probably worse in person than I am in videos, to be honest with you. So, you know, whatever. Um, like, but like I try to present like who I am, what my beliefs are as a core like person, like my morality, my ethics or whatever. But, like, I also know, to know that, like, I don't talk about my marriage because it's not anybody's business, um, any of that stuff. Like, I don't – see, exactly. <laughs> um, and things like that. And, like, I would show snippets of my partner occasionally when I was smaller. And now um, I did, like, a Q&A and that's it. Like, they will probably never be on my channel unless it's for members only because – for their work and stuff i'm just not comfortable putting their face on the internet like i don't show my family i've had my mom in a video that's like once like it's very hit and miss and i feel like now like compared to when i was smaller i literally like ask my friends i'm like so i'm blogging this do you want to be in the blog like i explicitly am already like getting permission and i'm like i i feel like my channel is small for doing that but i was like i need to instill this habit now and this like boundary because i don't want people to think that like, oh, I know what your partner looks like and I see them somewhere. I'm going to talk like, do you know what I mean? Like, because people yeah. cross lines and not intentionally. And I don't, oftentimes I don't think it's malicious, but I just would be super uncomfortable if somebody like walked up to my bestie um, and was like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And like knew their name and stuff because they watched my channel one time with a video with them in it or something. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. Like, it's just, it's interesting. I... My goal is always if somebody meets me that they're like, oh, you're like basically the same. Mm -hmm. But also, I just, I don't know, the, the need for all this detail freaks me out sometimes that people have. It's a lot. I hate it. It's fine. We're fine. Yeah. Well, I do with the additional aspect of, because I'm an author and this is supposed to be branding, uh, and there are really high demands on like, you, you have to... Authenticity is often equated with your whole self and everything about you and everything that makes you you. And if you don't share, that's weird. And I think it places really weird pressures on people. I've seen it do bad things for people. Like it can really mess up your private life. Like it can lead to like weird doxing situations. The sun is just my enemy here. Um, and I think I, I prefer, I, I think I'm authentic. I'm kind of like this, but I don't, I'm a very private person, period. That's what makes it very weird that I have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> do you guys meet people who assume because you're, you're a person on YouTube that you're like a narcissist who like share, overshares all the time? Because I've had a few people make that assumption. I'm like, no, I, I really don't. We all are, aren't we? Oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> to, to some extent. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, I mean, you can be yourself and share without, you know, yeah, it's the privacy thing. I, there's yeah. a lot of things y'all don't need to know about me because they're private. And I don't even tell them to all my friends. I have like, you know, mm-hmm. we have like levels of, mm-hmm. of, of mm-hmm. relationships with people and that's how it should be. That's not the fault people who choose to sh- be less private. Yeah. I personally feel comma, however, it's probably because of the era I came up in. I think it almost always backfires. Mm-hmm. If you are overly sharing hyper private information, you might regret it mm-hmm. later. So don't share anything you might regret. I do wonder a bit if like you hit a certain point in terms of channel size where it starts to become more of an issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's why I implemented it early is I was thinking about it and I was like, I think I want to do this now. So it's a known thing that like I don't really do that. You might like catch the back of my partner's head or their hand or like, you know what I mean? Like that you're not going to know like – I don't know. It's so weird. And I I think, um, I see, I think when you overshare, then people get this like idea through that parasocial relationship that like they're entitled to every detail about your messy breakup. And they feel entitled anyway. Uh, Yeah. The larger, like, I don't share that much, but people will say weird things to me. Um, and make assumptions about me. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all seen some things said about us on Guru Gospel, which is weird. Um, I don't look at it anymore. Oh, I don't look at it anymore. Like, I but can't I, know. I know I'm not big enough to register for them, which is great. <laughs> and that's and that's the weird thing. It's like this line of like, when do you become a public person? Mm-hmm. Really uncomfortable. I feel like I'm probably. I'm trying to think. Like at least of the group of us, I feel like I probably share more, mm-hmm. um, and I'm like less private about stuff. But I also. I don't know, like the, but I will say, like the bigger my channel gets, the less frequently I have, like my kids and my husband and my videos. They show up occasionally, but it's not like as much as what I, I used to do. And I think it's just because I'm like, I don't. That's like that's not what my channel is about. Partly is is like part of it, and I would mm-hmm. never do put them on. The only times they're on videos is when they want to be. Also, um, yeah, you don't ever put your like you and Ashley both never put your kids in there when they're like no being bad or like no. you know like, your oh, thing yeah, where no. like mommy vloggers show their kids misbehaving and you're like yeah, that's, why are you putting that, that for the true. world? That's like hard. that's weird. Yeah, so like there are definitely things I keep private, but I'm I'm a little bit more open about about stuff, and I think I probably feel a little more comfortable because I know. Um, like, I think, where, where was it? I think there was this, like, this question is an interesting one. Like, I think for me, like, I live in Manhattan. So, like, I'm in a very population-dense city. I live in a building with a doorman. Like, I feel pretty secure about, like, where we are and stuff. And so because of that, like, I'm probably less cautious about stuff like in vlogging and what I say and whatever. Um, but I have like, I have a PO box that I eventually got, I got instead of like a physical address. Um, so, so I have that for things and I don't know, like, I mean, I don't mention like the school my kids go to or like, I don't know. I just like, it's like stuff like that. I don't know about anybody else. I should protect myself more. I don't other than say LA, like, there was one person who, because I, there's another person on YouTube who I've done a stream with, and we said something in a live. I mean, I live in Hollywood. It's not a secret. It's not like, but like, I live in Hollywood. Millions of people live here. Yeah. But they were really trying to guess where I live and she works. And it was really creepy. I was like, stop trying. Stop. No, that's weird. Like, no. don't be weird. Like, mm-hmm. mm. <laughs> and you, for could, me... you could probably figure it out. Yeah, Ashley, I I think this is probably true for you, too. But part of it for me is professionally, um, I don't necessarily want my booktube presence to be associated with, like, if people are looking me up on LinkedIn or whatever. So, like, my name is Mara, but that's not the name I go by in real life, Um, which is very funny. When Bethany and I met in real life, (laughs) I gave the person in Starbucks my real name. And she was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that that's, like... (laughs) The name yeah. you go by. Mar, you just um, rocked my world with this news, actually. Oh, really? Did you? Yeah. Oh, did you not know this? 
no. Yeah. When we hang up, I'll tell you. I mean, I I don't have a problem telling like other yeah. creators the yeah. real name, but yeah. um, it throws me every time you say it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. we um but yeah, for me, part of it, like it's hard because I do I share things that for me are a part of what makes having a channel comfortable for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm somebody who tends to be very open. So it wouldn't be comfortable for me, for example, to be like hiding, you know, that I, that I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and that that's been a big part of my life for the last couple of years and the surgeries and all that. Like for me, that wouldn't be comfortable to like constantly be talking around, but Mm -hmm. I do have the boundary of like, I don't want to talk about the specific thing it is because I don't want people Right. Playing doctor. Very well. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good boundary because yeah. I feel like you would have um, so many people playing doctor. Yeah. But it's weird because like naturally I'm very, a very open person. So mm-hmm. it's kind of that hard balance of like, I do keep some, some things private. Like I don't talk about where I work or like exactly what I do. I'm kind of like a trans monster anyway. So I don't know that most people would even understand my job. Um, <laughs> a la Chandler being on friends. But, uh, yeah. Um, I forget where I was going. Anyway, Ashley, what about you? <laughs> so I'm in an interesting position as well. Like, so most people, I have had people try to figure out like where I work, um, which I try to make it as obscure as possible because I do base a lot of what I do in my profession. I incorporate that into my channel because that is authentic to mm-hmm. my life experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and it very much so is tied into this community. It all connects in some way, but the agreement that I have on the table as well is that nothing that I do or say on my channel is representative of where I work. And sometimes Mm -hmm. I will say that just in case somebody ever decides, because there was one time somebody, like I had a library card on my keychain and somebody had pointed that out. And it was literally like, I mean, when I say like a brief second like that, and they were kind enough to DM me and they didn't put it in the comments. So just like, hey, I just want you to know that there's this shot just in case someone stops. And I mean, you literally would have had to like, but people can get like that. You would have had to zoom in to try to figure out like the name on the card or whatever the case may be. But um, for professional reasons, I I try to keep it as separate as possible. I mean, people at my job do know that it exists. People at my job um, do watch my channel, and I tell them straight up, whatever I say and do outside of these four walls, if you watch it and you feel that's not my problem. <laughs> not, the way that y'all see, like, literally, I think for the most part, like, I am the same person. I'm a little filthier with my mouth and my attitude in person. I clean it up for That's YouTube. Um, I clean it up a lot for YouTube. Damn, <laughs> Ashley, come on now. We need we need this version of you. This is making no, y'all me know, like you y'all know the version of me for... behind closed doors. I don't think that everybody needs to know that version of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm really. I think with my living situation right now, keeping it 100 and being transparent. Like I live in the hood, y'all. Like. Nobody gonna come here. <laughs> I promise you, you run the risk of getting shot if you wanna be honest. Like, if you wanna try, I mean, but so, I mean, but just because I do have a minor, like, I don't get anything sent here. Like, mm-hmm. everything is sent to a P.O. box because I do have a child. I do not say my child's name on the internet. Um, I do share her sometimes in like vlogs, but like you won't see anything extensive about yeah. her life, mm-hmm. where she goes to school, she has a doctor's appointment, like nothing like that. It is the yeah. most random things mm-hmm. that you will ever see her in. Um, and as she gets older, that will probably decrease because at some point she's gonna probably be like, Mommy, mm-hmm. this ain't it. I don't, she's already there. <laughs> Like, no, I'm not doing this. So, um, but I am transparent about certain things. Like my mental health is not anything that I hide because Mm -hmm. once again, that's a part of my life. I think I actually share more on Instagram than I do on YouTube. Um, It's kind of easier to figure out what is going on in my life through my Instagram stories than it is for what I put on my YouTube channel. 
Um, people will know when I'm in a relationship, when I'm not in a relationship. Instagram stories will tell you the whole story. Like you'll know everything at that point. People will be like, I thought you were in a relationship and then I saw your story like, what happened? <laughs> So it's, it's, I don't know, like I, I'm a pretty open person, but like Mara said, like professionally is kind of where I draw the line. My child is kind of where I draw that line. Um, but I really haven't had too many people who, who've done really, really weird things. Like, yeah. I don't know, maybe because I got on a live show once and told somebody like I could have a pretty bad rap sheet and you would never know. Like I could be a convicted felon i could be a murderer you would never know the difference because what i show you on screen is all you know so mm -hmm. let me have to stop hey, there. we should we should play that game which of the five of us <laughs> we, we should get like a poll going because <laughs> maybe great. it's me it could be you. Cool. i've been having could be me <laughs> could be me you never know <laughs> It's definitely oh, Bethany, though. Man. Let's all be honest here. It's Bethany. Secretly. I mean, she does live in New York, so. I, I do. <laughs> She's secretly a you know, brilliant. The concrete jungle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, oh, man. Something that, that made me think about, too, is, like, I – my partner travels for work. So I, I vlog weekly just about. I – that's why I don't talk about my partner. You don't know. You do not know if I'm home alone or not. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. in, you might – like, if I mention it, it's usually because, like, the vlog's coming out and they're coming back. But, like – I purposely like avoid discussing it because that's something mm -hmm. that's like, you know, I don't live um, in the most populated area necessarily. <laughs> um, even though I have a PO box and stuff that's like not in the same town I live in technically, <laughs> but a big enough area. Hush, hush. <laughs> now I think it's either my, me my or street. Alexis since street. we're the mystery editors. The mystery writers, right? You don't know yeah, what I've done, done, okay? Exactly. Some things are hands-on um, experience. Yeah, that you have to practice those murders. <laughs> Wait, yeah, like that's that. something I think about a lot. What think about the lady? The lady. I'm sorry, oh, this is so random. The lady yeah. said how to kill your husband. Yeah. Yes, oh, okay, oh, your your husband. Husband. <laughs> Did you? Yes. See? Oh my gosh, that was like yeah. We what? So what is the story? Because that was okay. the headline. But I they was, never actually I told was, me. About okay, the I book. was just reading. Oh, she she writes romantic suspense books. Yes. And oh. so she said that she, that it was research of figuring out how to buy a gun in pieces, and like, you know, murder her husband. But then somebody like there's she got convicted of yeah like, today murder it was killing her husband. It's wild. You don't yeah. tell on that. yourself like that, Nancy. Right? Like, what are you doing? I promise well, I right. haven't killed anyone. Yes, it was a romance <laughs> author. She's like a romantic. Of course, author. it was a romance <laughs> author. In yeah. fairness, so I've only done strangulation so far in in my like I've I've gone to that well. I don't have the arm strength. So, oh, I thought you were yeah, trying I to don't strangulate it. Some, I was like, wait, huh? Strangling? So, so this is in, in my book. This is like, I've only strangled people so far. It actually I what she was saying. <laughs> so I was like, are we getting a confession <laughs> right now? Like, oh my I gosh. I don't have the arm strength. Yes, it. Rachel. Anymore. I used to. I, it takes I feel like time. I have enough weight I that mean, even if my arms aren't strong, well, I could just like. But Mark, can you do it for more than three minutes? That is um, the dividing line. I don't mind. It's know, getting very pandemic, dark. My stand up has gone really far down. <laughs> my next so book, I talk about that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Murder oh, tour. Fun oh, facts. Should be interesting. Yeah. Um, she blamed a person experiencing homelessness instead of her crazy yes. ass. Yes. Bitch, <laughs> Rachel, keep an eye out. Rachel, I think, has a, vid a like a tr book author true crime video on this coming. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I cannot wait, Rachel. Interesting. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> Oh my god. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I've come up with some really creative murder murder motives that I haven't or in like ways to get away with it that I haven't used yet in a book. So if anyone needs ideas. You're just plotting. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um Yes. I saw personal. that. That was okay. No. Yes. This whole thing. Also, it's a woman's weapon. Poison's Come the on. way to yeah. go. There's a reason women mostly poison people because it's actually yeah. really smart. Okay. I have feelings. And it's how you get away with yeah. it. I okay, mean, like also. I mean. 
it's a woman's choice and yeah. she just couldn't handle you that. Know, like, she I was really like, I'm not hope going this none of you end long. up being suspects in a poisoning in the future because someone's going to find, like, dig up this <laughs> live stream. And you said, I've read <laughs> A is for Arsenic, which is all about how Christy <laughs> killed people with poisons in her books. So, like, I'm oh, already yeah. screwed. <laughs> She's the master. Oh my gosh. Okay. I somewhere up here there was a question that I wanted to get to. Where was Back on track. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So two things that I thought were interesting. One is uh Alex, I think this is interesting. I don't know. I think maybe not all of us. Most of us have like Patreon. Alexa, I don't know if you do. No, but I think the rest I don't of us have, have the emotional <laughs> bandwidth. That's to fair. Keep up something like that, and I know myself. Fair. So. Um, but for everybody, because I think the rest of us do. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's something to talk about too. Is like, how do you how do you think of like your Patreon or the patrons, and you know, depending on like how long. Because I will say this: like, I'm probably like I'm probably a little bit more open in live streams and stuff with patrons than with other people. And like some of the people who are on my Patreon have been with me now for like years. And I feel like I kind of know them were like more friendly than other, you know what I mean? Like, so I feel like that's been a way that I've kind of gotten to know some people a little bit, but not everybody, but like there's some, I I don't know how everybody feels. I feel like in a, you know, in some of the more like recent chats that we've done or reading sprints, I feel more comfortable sharing certain things that I would never share with like I think I shared one time like an incident that happened at work and I was venting like I would never Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. during a live stream on my channel it's just too much right there's too much risk because I've had people who like have popped up and I'm like no idea that you were watching so yeah Mm -hmm. I think there's even there there's this it's a step up with a level of trust Mm -hmm. than you know your public (laughs) open stuff yeah. yeah, you never know who's watching. Uh, Lizelle, a uh, Twitter DM that she liked my my top. She's watching. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Actually, it's very. Cute. I was too. I was like, it's from Torrid. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's got like this little bow. Oh, cute. Aww. Love that. I like it. It's very. That solid. was actually one of my hesitancies in starting Patreon. Was like, I didn't want people to feel like they could like buy access to me. Mm. Like that mm-hmm. felt really. Yeah. complicated or fraught mm-hmm. um like in a very enhanced version of a parasocial relationship but I decided to do it because I wanted to have a place where I felt like I could like if I wanted better recommendations for things or if there was a topic I wanted to talk about but didn't want to talk about like for mass consumption I did mm-hmm. like a JKR video mm-hmm. that like about her politics um and i was like i just don't want to moderate comments on this so i'm gonna put it up on (laughs) patreon (laughs) um but yeah it's like it's been great like my patrons have been really respectful and great but i that was something i was actually kind of worried about was like will this make people feel like they have like bought access to me in a way that i'm not comfortable with yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i struggle with that too like the access part of it like i was concerned but i do give my patrons or members like more insight into my life like when we were house hunting they were like with me along the way you know I posted a house tour for them I was like hey you want to see my new house they were like yeah here's the new house like pre-paint pre-everything mm-hmm. um but I yeah I, I just feel like that's a lot of dedication to, to like I feel like you wouldn't have to pay five dollars to find me if you truly if right. you were at that level. Um, good luck. Well, <laughs> well, and also you can like the thing is too is like Patreon lets you ban people from yes, your Patreon. And like, I so, do so like that. Pe- yeah, so like if people and I don't know if patrons all know that, but like if people are abusing things, mm-hmm. you can ban them. Um, I mean, I've never had to do that, but like, you, but it's an option. So. Yeah, but like, it's it's weird because like, I want them to feel like they have like that that little more of a slice into my life than my yeah. regular members. But like, you're not missing anything really. Like, instead, you get my partner's name, and you'll you know get more fun weird shit that I don't show everyone. Like, I don't show the full layout of my house online. Like, you probably piece it together. Yeah. But I'm not going to be like, here's a full walkthrough so you can go find the listing to find the house I bought. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I'm like, eh. 
I think this, this is, is also great. true. Mm-hmm. It does yeah. feel more contained, especially like, yeah. which is nice, especially as your channel starts growing and mm-hmm. there, there's so many people watching, like it can be nice to have like a smaller community. Um, and like, I don't yeah. know. And it, 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 I feel like it builds a nice sense of community for you Yeah. outside of like your regular comments. If that makes sense. Like yeah. the people that you just like, I know, are there hanging randomly yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, like part, the downside of growing also, we should caveat that, like, in the scheme of YouTube, all of us are just, like, minnows, <laughs> but relatively. Yeah, but, um, yeah. You pass a certain number, and people start treating you differently. Like, it's, it's like, they think you're too cool for school, or, like, mm-hmm. you have an ego now, and it's like, no, I'm the same person I was. You still feel like the same person, but they see you as someone because you have X number of subscribers. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it is weird, and it's also, like, it's overwhelming because there's so many people responding to you and you have so little, the bigger you get, the less and less control you really have over who is responding to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause like randos come in all the time and most of those randos are great. And if they stick around, that's great. And they're lovely and they contribute good things. But some of them are like Christy dude bros explain to me how I like don't understand the brilliance of endless night or whatever. Like, I don't know. What a one to yeah. pick, because I, I I had mixed feelings about that. One. <laughs> it's melodramatic AF, in my opinion, but I no, we're yeah. already there, Alexa. No, I mean I didn't love it, so I feel like we're on a similar page with that. Well, so we're we don't just smart the bros. They already hate me. I get comments all the time. This, I don't know if this is authenticity so much as YouTube abuse um, from men who will like qualify that like I literally had one this week say like basically that I wasn't hot, that I wasn't very attractive, but like he'd listen to my advice anyway. Oh, and okay. So close to responding, so sorry to kill your boner. <laughs> Why like, didn't that's the perfect response? I'm like, saving I that. I am saving I that mean, for honestly, the minute somebody oh tells me gosh. that. That's wow. Yeah. But like People think that, yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're, yeah. I'm not here for the male gaze. I'm here for the female no, gaze. Right? Well, it's like, like oh, come on. Me. Like, I really care about your opinion and, like, whether you think I'm effable. I just want the cute girl right, that was very awesome. telling me my outfit's cute. Like, that's all I need in life, you know? Like, yeah. go out and get told by some cute girl that my outfit's cute. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I happy. think it's funny because I feel like the diagram of, like, like, my, like, the people who watch my stuff are, like, mostly women and queer men <laughs> that's the thing like, i only get most straight not entirely but mostly select videos mm-hmm. it's select <laughs> videos where they come uh. and they curl abuse at me and then the rest of my viewership it's like queer women <laughs> queer guys yeah. and women mm-hmm. folks you've got us oh my gosh this is i wish i was surprised by that but like yeah that's, people are there so are a lot of very how to phrase this and I, I explain this to people like who are on other bookish platforms. They're like, really? I was like, yeah, just a lot of viewership on YouTube. I don't want to use like buzzwords, like dog whistle buzzwords, but they, 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 they have, hmm, they have different uh, ideas and values and there's a mm-hmm. lot of them. And mm-hmm. despite their, they should be aware that I'm not their cup of tea. Cause I may not share their values just to watch. And choose to comment a lot. And I'm like, why are you here? There's a lot. Christopher. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> you are you know you're just in the right place. I mean, I think it's because we just don't have the patience for the like toxic s- straight masculine. I mean, there are like a few guys who are, you know, like okay, but like we just don't have a lot of patience for it. I mean, you know, if you're not being called out in this conversation very yeah. distinctly, yeah. I feel like if you're a dude. I told yeah. one guy, I haven't really got many like super crazy comments lately, which I'm surprised considering the content. Um, <laughs> but I told one guy that his mother should have swallowed. And, you know, that kind of put an end to a lot of, because that's how I am in person. Like, 
that's exactly who I am in person. So like, if you want me to be authentic, I'll drag you through these internet streets. I don't have a problem because I drag people in real life. So it's not a problem. But I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit more classy than to tell someone your mother should have swallowed you. It was a bad decision that you didn't I mean, swallow. Like, like, someone like, need to know that though, you know? But he needed to know that. He needed to know that. And I was just like, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I remember when it happened because I screenshotted it and I was like, just wait till I drop my daughter off at daycare. Wait till I get home. <laughs> and I, I tore I tore into him that day. I was like, I just don't have the patience for the bullshit to be honest with you. I really don't. Oh, I gosh. enjoy clapbacks. Like, yeah. I'm beyond this giving a fuck, honestly. Like, oh, I'm yeah. too old for this. I Meaning I, I'm not like I don't care. I'll say the same thing over there. My favorite thing is to say, okay, sis, to those men, because it makes them so mad. <laughs> like, I go mean, off this and I handle it. J Law, okay. Yeah. I would just post that as a response oh, to a gosh. lot of comments. Yeah. And I also like to just post K to like a wall of text. Like if they post like <laughs> oh, three I paragraphs, I'll just respond. No. Okay. I get the weirdest response? essays for people sometimes where I'm like, okay. Yeah, people write a whole essay. And yes, you know, like in this essay, I will just uh, I will argue that. Bob and when they don't like, use paragraph breaks, no, no, it's like, like long. To yes, like, like or like yes. I'm like, but who who did you? And I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It's sometimes I read the first and the last sentence, and oh, I yeah. see what's in between the first. And I'll like I'm skim it. Read the like, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's just, people are, are interesting. I think it's funny. I still get, like, I got a comment on a video recently of some, I get clearly a rando who, like, just found it was like, was like, what is up with these booktubers, like, saying that they read, like, you know, however many books a month. This is just effing ridiculous. Clearly, this isn't true. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm not all. rewatching just- NCIS five times a week, sir. I mean, so I don't know what to tell you. I just think it's. I mean, it's, it's fine if you want to, but yeah. But I, it's always, funny. I think his, he was like, he was like, "How are you saying you're reading like 360 pages in a day?" I'm like, I'm wait. like, okay, that's what like four hours listen, of reading. Like, listen. like, like people watch four hours of TV but in a night. Listen, like, I always yeah. come back, y'all, because listen, I'm getting older, and I can't for the life of me figure out why are y'all so pressed. About what I don't know why they're so pressed about how much we read. But why are you pressed about what I got going on in my house? As if you pay my bills or wipe my ass. I'm so confused. <laughs> like, what? why are you so concerned? If it doesn't affect you, why are you pressed about it? It doesn't affect your day. It don't put money in your pockets. It doesn't bring you spark of joy, spark of life, whatever that. But why are you so concerned and so pressed about what somebody else is doing? Like, I just, I never, I... I don't think I could ever grasp that about some creators and viewers. Mm -hmm. Like you're so wound up about what somebody else is doing. And I'm like, this can't be good for your mental health. It's not. Yeah. It can't be. It really can't be. Yeah. When someone pisses me off, they're dead to me. I mean, like, and that's kind of the reality. Like there's certain people in the community that other people don't love and they'll be like did you see so-and-so said this and i'm like no i blocked them everywhere they're dead to me it's as if they have never existed i like this this energy i have no idea i mean well and i think that's one thing too that is interesting is like like most of this they're like behind the scenes there is definitely plenty of interpersonal drama like this is what i think is funny is like this it's bigger than you think, and you'd be surprised. I mean, I feel yeah. like most yeah. people are able to be like polite with our colleagues in public, but like there is a lot of interpersonal. Oh, stuff behind closed doors, behind the scenes, oh, I dragged the hell yes. out of a lot of people in this community. <laughs> it's gonna keep on, be dragging people for filth. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sitting here like, go on, go on. <laughs> We're, I'm, I'm that person. I'm like, get her, Jade. Like that's that's me. <laughs> Yeah, Heather. this uh, what Heather is saying here is exactly it. I think there's this like false idea that like we're a close knit community, and I think you know I view everybody on BookTube as a colleague to an extent, yeah, right? We can all be nice in person ish, depending no. on what you did, depending on what you did, <laughs> depending on what you did. Let me clarify, depending on what you did. Um, does that mean I'm not gonna fight somebody who like said some shitty shit in person? And Ashley's gonna stand there and be like, "You get them? Yeah, that that will be what happens." 
People say shitty shit in person. Oh, we're gonna talk offline about. Yeah, exactly. But I just, I I mean, why am I surprised? Authors do shit all the time. Oh, I mean, I will say this too: is like I again, not something I would talk about naming names publicly, but like there are also authors I've had bad personal experiences with that I'm like, I'm not gonna read your book. Well, and also just on the topic of authenticity, where then you're like, oh, your social media is truly a persona. We've mm-hmm. all had that yes. moment of like, oh, you mm-hmm. pretend to be a nice person on the internet. This is illuminating. Happens to all, like, authors experience this too. Authors are yeah. just like you, except when we're not. Yeah. Because I mean, some of them are not like normal people. Booktubers too, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, there are yeah. booktubers who people love and i have heard stories i've i've not had an experience yet but i've oh. heard some stories from oh. my friends with bigger shells <laughs> there's some yep yep, yep. And it's it's one of my favorite things i'm like uh-huh okay now i know but i also know if i have somebody that i'm like i don't know who you are and you got the size of a channel and none of my friends interact with you red flag yeah yeah i mean i think that's part of it is it's like i do I, like i don't I don't know. Like in in general in life, like I if I have a problem with somebody, I might just not want to be around them, but I'm not going to drag everybody else into it. So I do the same thing online. Um, but I I don't know. Like this is the thing that's where authenticity is interesting because I do think there are some people who are different publicly than privately. Mm-hmm. But I do try really hard to be as much myself as possible and like okay, little stuff even that I just, um, I don't know, like, like things that I think are valuable is like, if I'm vlogging, for instance, or even tonight, well, it's nice. Cause like I have a thing with like, I don't know, one of my eyes is having things. So I don't have any makeup on, but like, I will like not have makeup on in cl- mm-hmm. vlog clips because like, that's, I admire that. I look like a disgusting you know piece I don't of have that friends. <laughs> yeah. I so- do that too, though. Like my vlogs are very raw. Like I'm in yeah. pajamas or loungewear a lot, sweatshirts and bike shorts, which is like what I'm in anyways, but makeup, I mean, I'm makeup on right now, like barely any left because I filmed today. Like that's it. That's the only reason I have any on right now. But I, I just, I yeah, I was vlogging and I realized like in the middle of filming the clip that I had already applied like a gigantic acne treatment, like that was green <laughs> mask. And I was like, here you go, guys. Oh, I, I have a now. disgusting human body and this is me trying to take care of it. <laughs> I just, I haven't come that, like, that far with my own, like, it's been a journey for me to be comfortable with what I look like and, like, my Mm, own face. So, like, that's, that's authenticity for you. I feel more comfortable if I have makeup on. So, you can kind of see, it's just, I try, I'm bright red. My skin is bright red. Like, I have nice skin, except I'm a tomato. And I still get pimples when I do cover those. But, hey, I just bought Jones Road what the f foundation or what's the foundation is it thank good? you viral tiktok uh i, I will see say, when it comes how is it i know i need a product I, review are like, you gonna slather it all over your all face? over my face <laughs> well when i saw what it was i was like oh this might actually be exactly what i need mm-hmm. for i want like, that balm thing i don't know what it does make, but I the love way she makeup, talks makeup. about it i'm like i want that yeah. i want to try i'll let you know because like yeah. i'm like well when i'm at home all the time and i just want to do a quick vlog I don't want to, so I'm wearing my Charlotte Tilbury makeup, but it's heavy. I don't want to do this all the time. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. play with it and see what I think. So, yeah. I just need light red coverage so I don't look sickly. Like the whole middle of my face is like pink. I mean, again, I feel very and, attacked I right mean, now. mine is, you know what though? Okay. <laughs> you know who I credit with my skin being better? This is random, but I was watching Instagram stories from Lee Bardugo once, and she mentioned that she had like some skin thing because I I actually I have like a little bit of like eczema and rosacea, mm-hmm. and so she was talking about this thing that has um oh gosh I can't it's I can't think of it now but it's like a like a slightly medicated face cream that she recommended that you can get on Amazon and I started using it and like. I don't what have eczema it? on my face anymore. Lee Bardugo, it's, changing lines. it's like, yeah, Lee Bardugo, like, fixed. Okay, she I does have amazing it. skin. She has, I mean, my skin is not like hers, but it is a lot better. It's, uh, I can, I'll find it. I, I, I want to know the ingredient, too. Because in fairness, like, yeah. I will prioritize Paula's choice if anyone wants. Because that has I made a real Paula's impact choice. on my skin. Same. Yeah, um, we love, it, we love it, Paula's choice. looks better than it used to. So. 
yeah, my skin's actually pretty fine. It's just yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I have I have texture. I have redness. I have spot. I mean, like, oh my god, you have normal skin. <laughs> it just yeah, like, yeah. No, it, I, it turns out I'm a human, not a filter. Actually, that's yeah. kind of an aut authenticity thing too. I know we're not beauty bloggers, but yeah. I am really uncomfortable using filters on my social mm -hmm. media because mm -hmm. I like I don't want to like seem to be hiding my age mm. or how I look. I can see that. Um, and that. that's just like a thing for me personally. And though sometimes like, I hate it when I go and I'm like, why did like TikTok, I, I'm actually convinced that there is a default filter on TikTok because I swear, like I should look worse. Oh, there is actually. In so my TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, no, TikTok has like a. Um, I love TikTok's thing. like okay, I'm gonna go see crazy it. makeup ones. I like to try them just to see what I look like, and I always look horrifying. So. Oh, I know. I do it, too. I'm like, these are fun, but terrible. And, and I, made for say, bad I people. there's a difference between a fun filter and, like, but, like, yeah, I, for me, that's just a thing of, like, I, I am okay. I mean, I'm, I'm coming to terms with, like, looking my age, and I think I, it's good for other people to set a good example. Personally, that's how I feel. Like, do what you do, but, like, you don't have to be afraid of, of aging so yeah. it's very it's much better than the alternative so yeah i will say just on a funny point that there are certain in this case authors but it's like whoever you follow where i do see their social and the filters they use and like the face tuning and i'm like i know you don't look like that in person what are you doing your readers are gonna find out oh, no. that's sad. like we aren't gonna find out we're gonna find out events <laughs> you ever do an event yeah, and I think it's, um, it's, it shouldn't be funny, but it's a little funny. Oh my gosh! Um, See, Ashley you should look like your author photos. Yeah, look getting compliments so, on her iconic lipsticks, which is uh, I love yeah. Ashley's lipsticks. They're great. Yeah. So people were asking. I I know people were asking about the product. So I went and grabbed it. It's this stuff. It's Come called. On. Put your hand behind it uh, like you're a real yeah, beauty influencer. Aquanil HC. It has uh, hydrocortisone in it. All right, hold on. And, We're all writing this down, or I am. Yes. Oh, be careful though with hydrocortisone. Yeah. I use. You can you develop a a dependency. I don't. So I use it like every two days, and just like a little bit in like problem areas, and like ever since I did, I don't have the problem. Like I don't I'm gonna have, send like... you a warning TikTok <laughs> so that you will never overuse it because it okay. can get bad. Okay. I have somehow got on that TikTok. That's the only reason why I know this. TikTok thought that I was okay. likely to start abusing it. And so they showed me this and I'm now afraid. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, like I, I try, I don't use very much of it. Like, and it only has 1% hydrocortisone and I just use it very sparingly, like once yeah. every couple days, but like it has fixed a lot of problems. So Anyway. Ashley, you missed we were we were complimenting your lipstick okay. game, which is far superior to any of ours. Like a creature no. that I heard moving amongst the books. <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> I had to mute myself because I was in your screen. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I have a severe fear of spiders, y'all. It just never. It. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm. What did I miss? My rule is if they leave me alone, I leave them alone. <laughs> but if they come into my space, yep. they have signed their own but death. But if I can they belong you moving, outside. <laughs> I can yeah. hear you moving. Like, I, that's. Mm -mm. Oh. See, my cats murder yeah. them. It's great. Yeah, my cat plays with it. It doesn't kill it. And I'm like, oh. please do your job. Fine. like to murder and eat insects. So it's pretty convenient. Yeah. So we're just talking about the infighting in the romance community that nobody knows about because it's not public. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Ashley. Part of the romance community, and I know, holy shit. I, yeah. I mean, I don't think viewers know as much no. of it no. Um, no. as we, we do true. perhaps here on the screen. But I'm just like okay. on they the edge. Of, I'm, on, I'm on the fringes of the romance community. So I kind of like. I just watch. Yeah. I tell you all the tea. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. I, um,. I was listening and I heard a little bit about beauty. What did I miss? The filters. <laughs> uh, filters. And and doing vlogging without makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did a lot that. of stream about like the beauty standards of. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Part of this, huh? Did Heather do that? 
No, it's on my channel. Oh, it's on your channel. That's where it is. I was like, uh, somebody, somebody did that. Um, and I will okay. say that, like, I feel like my experience as a black woman on mm -hmm. YouTube is different when it comes to beauty standards. Mm -hmm. Like, Mara, I heard you say, like, I have had people comment, like, oh, that lipstick just, I wouldn't wear that lipstick. And it's like, why do you feel, I'm here talking about books. Yeah. Why are you I here think, telling me, like, what, I mean, like, yeah. like, honestly, Ashley, like, I can tell you, like, people are so much harder on you because, like, I'll do stuff similar to you and no yeah. one will say a word. So, like, yeah. it is 100% mm -hmm. the case. Yeah, I don't get comments get on my black lipsticks. No. Yeah, and, well, I, and you get and, and and you get more comments on like your sponsored videos. I don't get mm -hmm. that. Like, I just feel like people are really mm -hmm. something. I but think. I also feel like it also is a microcosm of what I think I experience in the real world. So for me, mm -hmm. it's not like super abnormal, mm -hmm. but it is a thing that happens where people will make comments about things that other booktubers are not going to have to deal with because mm -hmm. they're not black, a black woman at that. And so, I mean, it's not, I'm not gonna sit here and say like, it's not bothersome because it is, because it's like, I know that, um, I know that my white counterparts necessarily are not gonna get the same thing. I'm not gonna fit your typical beauty standards, not only because of like weight wise, but I mean, we could even go down to something as what we think is simple as like hair texture what my hair looks like. Like, it, it's amazing that I think proximity to whiteness plays a role in a lot of it, but that's also, that's larger society infiltrating this community as well. So it, yeah. it doesn't really come as a surprise, but it does happen. It's it's a mess and a half, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And I don't know, I don't know if that like, Speaking of authenticity, sometimes it is harder to be authentic. And why I said I have to tone myself down, because if I am myself, which is my authentic self, how is that going to be perceived as me being a black woman? Like mm -hmm. the drama, my mouth, the angry black woman stereotype, like all of that plays a role. Like yeah. anything. And I guess in a larger grand scheme of things with YouTube or a booktube in general, like when you're talking negatively about something it does well. And I try to stay away from that myself personally, because I don't want that stereotype to be associated with like black women being angry, negativity, the drama, that's what you're used to seeing. That's what you expect. And that's what's going to make me successful on this platform. So it is, it's, it's a tough line. I think for me personally to ride with like who I am, code switching, am I really authentic? Because a lot of times I code switch. Mm -hmm. So how I talk in my videos all the time is not how I talk amongst people that I'm close to, but it's mm -hmm. also the same thing at work. I code switch at work because it makes mm -hmm. non-Black people feel more comfortable to hear me talk in a way that's similar to them. Yeah. And so I think that when we talk about authenticity, you also have to take in consideration what marginalized communities that person is coming from because sometimes these spaces don't allow us to be our authentic self and i know for me i am authentic but then i'm not really a hundred all the time either because i can't be that way amongst what's book two predominantly white women mm -hmm. like i can't i can't you know but i'm also not going to be the the preppy like energetic like that's just not hey like guys. That's not, <laughs> That's not me. Like it's not no. me. But I also find it very unique that this, like, what would be authentic to me in terms of like AAVE is mm -hmm. used by people mm. who it's not authentic too. And it's like everybody thinks it's like, oh, this is so cool. And I'm like, no, the fuck it's not. Like, stop. <laughs> like, it's so frustrating. No lie, y'all. I'm so sorry, but and I still can't get past this. Like, it is very frustrating to see non-black booktubers, and I will say this until I die, it's very frustrating to see non-black booktubers use AAVE so loosely and so freely and not knowing the history behind it. And it's considered authentic and it's like, no, the fuck is not authentic. It's not authentic. It can't be authentic to you. Mm -hmm. There's no way it could be authentic to you. But if I get on social media 
And I do some of the stuff that my white counterparts are doing, and it is native to my culture. People mm -hmm. look at me as if I'm uneducated. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's mind boggling to me. Like if I have to hear that's on period, girl, what? <laughs> What, do, what the hell do you know about that? You don't know anything about that. I promise you outside of the internet, you are not walking amongst your friends talking about that's one period. I, I promise you, you're not. Because I promise you the crew that you run with does not talk like that. But you know that when you get on the internet, it's cute and cool to say, I exist, that's on period. Like, mm. like no, no. I see people saying like flex and I'm like, oh. it's almost as bad as that girl who went out on the internet was like Chile. Like that's that, I was like, that's literally what's playing in my mind is that girl on TikTok who said Chile. <laughs> and I'm like, you mean child? Like, oh, no. oh, I didn't even realize. Oh my god. Oh, you didn't get that. Yeah, have you not seen that? <laughs> nope, I didn't so even good. She's like doing out. her makeup <laughs> and she says that. <laughs> and, oh, it was Chile. I'm like <laughs> Oh, I think, but see, this is where it gets complicated. Like, it's, yeah, it gets very, very. Here's my thing that I say because I know, let's keep it 100. I know white girls who've grown up around nothing but black people and they talk mm -hmm. and walk and dress and act just like me. And it's, it's amazing to see because it's not them trying to infiltrate or try to put on. It's what they've grown up around. But yeah. what I try to tell people is they also have to remember that no matter how black you may act or how much you've grown up around black people, black people will take you in. But you have to remember that the world is still going to see you as white. You're still a white woman at the end of the yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And you have to acknowledge that you're a white woman. I'm not saying that language doesn't have any transactions, like when people start to interact with people more that you won't absorb some things that people are saying. The issue that I take with it is that people often don't want to reckon with the history behind it. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to acknowledge the privilege that they still have, even if they grow up around whatever minority population and they pick up on those cultural elements. You've got to, you've got to recognize and respect that and understand it and see how you still have advantages not being technically a part of that. To take a whole language of a, to take a whole language of a population and say that it's pop culture or it's Gen Z language is very disrespectful. I'm not saying that young kids now are not gonna say on period or sis or whatever, but the issue behind that is that most of them don't know the history behind it and that black people for the longest time have been considered, you know, you're not educated, you're stupid. Right. You don't know how to speak appropriately. There are still black people, our generation, who have to code switch, who've been taught that in order to make it in this world, you have to make your white counterparts feel comfortable. So you have to reckon with the issues that this whole entire race of people have gone through before you just say something like your Gen Z language or it's pop culture. It's disrespectful to simplify it like that. It's disrespectful to a whole group of people. And there's exceptions to every rule. Like mm -hmm. I had someone comment on the video that I did about AAVE literally today and was like, I've grown up. I was adopted by a black family. Like, how do you mm -hmm. account for that? There's nothing wrong with that. You can't help who you've been adopted by, who you've grown up with. But at the same time, still recognize that when you go out into the world, the world is still going to see you as white. I don't care who you've grown up around. Right. If it's me and it's, if it's me, you and a cop, you think the cop is going to be like, oh, you grew around black people, girl, you black. No, the cop is going to look at you and say, you're a white woman. It doesn't matter what you look like, how you sound, you're still a white woman. They look at me. I can't change my skin color. I can't change from being black. I could talk like the whitest white girl from Valley. And they still be like, but you black. You still blackity black, black, black. You wake up tomorrow, you still going to be black. So. Well, and people talk about like, I don't know. This can get into the territory of people saying like, well, you can't say anything anymore. And it's like, that's, you can say whatever you want. Like, I mean, this is like, you can choose to do whatever you want. It's just, I think it's frustrating to me when people, cause like, I know that I've had times where I've appropriated AAVE and like, I have to be willing to be called out on that. If I, if that happens, like, mm -hmm. I think people want to live in a world where it's like, I want to be able to say whatever I want to say and nobody can ever have a response to it. 
and it's like yeah. you can choose to do that but just know like right you, like you, you know you, you may, get may a also or, right yeah I think just trying to be self-aware because it's like I do know there are some things that have like made their way into my sort of normal vocabulary mm-hmm. but then I also think that there are people who like 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 are performing something and that's different you know what I mean like I do because I feel like I don't I don't know there are people well, I mean, who like, do I've goddesses? seen oh god no oh, sorry I was just gonna say booktube yeah. goddesses comment I know I'm very guilty of that because I watch so much um non-white queer based media <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. much of what I watch on YouTube. So I know that a lot of that is appropriative. Like it I'll is. catch myself saying something and I'm like, ooh, that came from me watching too much Bob the Drag Queen. Like I need to calm down. <laughs> like this is not really for me to say. Sorry, Izzy, go ahead. Uh, no, you're fine. I was gonna say, I know on Ashley's point with people using AAVE sometimes, I'm also yeah. thrown when it's people that I know are <laughs> racist. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And like, I know I'll say, and part of it's because like people hang out with or black and they use those words and it's just you know but like i i different That's conversation killer. obviously too though uh but it's very interesting when i see it used by people who i know avoid black romance like don't read it yeah avoid do you know what i'm saying and i'm like i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it actually actually i got you i said i know not here in the year of our lord 2022 I know this. I know I must be. I must be losing my mind. Yep. Also, um, happy birthday, Brie, if you're still in the comments. But not always like, <laughs> happy birthday. Yeah, she ran off. She said she was tipsy. But yeah, like, I don't know, like, um, yeah, that that's what I'm always like, what are you doing? Like, you have to know. But I maybe, yeah. who knows? But that's a good point. We definitely too. see a good one soon. And, and honestly, Marsha, to be honest with you, that's the part that bothers me the most is that it'd be like people who don't pick up a single black book and just, I mean, just <laughs> off the whip, just, I mean, every other word. And I'm like, but, but, but bro, like what's, what's going on here? Like for real, I, I'm so confused, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm so confused about what is going on. And like even and like the cis thing is also a stretch for me too. <laughs> like it is, it's a huge thing, and I get it because that also comes from the queer community, yeah, and black queer community. Mm-hmm. And then yes. when when you have someone who's not black call you cis, it's very awkward. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie to you. People be like, yeah, yeah. Um, period, cis, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you to? Like, I just don't like and it's and you I mean just understanding for me all jokes aside it's really just understanding like the history behind stuff you have to have that level of respect because while you're able to do something freely you have to understand that some people have not always had that luxury it's not yeah. to say that you can't say stuff or you can't use stuff because like you said Mara at the end of the day you could say whatever you want to say we can't control that, but have respect. It's it's just respect. It is it you gotta have some level of respect there before you feel like I'm just gonna say and do whatever because I think it sounds cool and my viewers like it and it makes me seem cool amongst my viewers when you know when you log off in real life, you just are back to absolutely, totally. No, yeah. where's that period sis at that she was using on like rats? <laughs> Lisa, yeah. the, I, I've never had that experience, and I hope to continue to never have that experience. <laughs> I've witnessed it, and I've just been like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, it's yeah. awkward. Yeah. I mean, like, you can, it's a free country. You can say things. You just can. know that, like, people are probably going to judge you and, like, have That's a certain a feeling. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. And speaking of authenticity, right? Like, I do think this is interesting to, oh, to talk about. Like, you can tell the difference. <laughs> it's like that there are, I mean, well, because I think that's a true is like, do you prioritize reading diversely regularly or are you just doing it because it's Black History Month? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
we I just can't anymore. Like I I'm cool with who I'm cool with. I know new friends. Okay. That's the phase that I'm in because I'm very glad I sneaked in. There. I know, right? Like, my no, 2020 no. mission is like I'm making Ashley my friend. No new friends because at this point, like I, just, I, I'm done. I'm done. Like, do whatever you feel like at this point, y'all. Because y'all just the the things that I see, like your black author stacked in February, yeah. and then not a near black author in sight after the fact. And I'm like, but what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Just don't read books mm -hmm. by black authors at all. At least mm -hmm. we know you're being authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. It's. Mm. There you go, Beth. <laughs> if you're problems. using any language patterns that aren't natively yours to look cooler or more socially relevant, there's likely a need for introspection. That's I mean, very that's well. Listen, I'm just saying, bring back well the, the the old white yeah. man like rats. Dang yeah. nabbits. <laughs> like just lean into I, that. Like you gosh, into darn that. Willy. I, use, I use old person speak all the time. Like <laughs> like Lord Love a Duck. I say all sorts of sorts of weird things. Like, this this my white this, grandma. Me, yeah. this. Oh God. this. Yeah. This. Yeah. That's a good freaking point. It's a good point. I just see the recommendation. Point. I'm looking for black romance. Interracial, interracial. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like no, nope, that's not that's not no things. Yeah, and then this not is, knowing. You know what? This is also true because if you start actually reading more books by Black authors and following more of them on social media, mm -hmm. you will learn very quickly. <laughs> like yeah. honestly, I just oh, and I yeah. do I do um. <laughs> I appreciate Heather's comment that like. You can't expect booktubers to talk on every current event, but you can expect them yeah. to read diversely. Because, like, mm -hmm. part of it is just there's like the human brain is not able to process the amount of horror and trauma yeah. that is on the news yes. literally every day. Like, yeah. we were not evolved to do that. So, like, yeah, it, it's difficult because, like, if you're being at, like, I've not been that active recently on social media because I've just been busy or whatever. But, like, if yeah. I was being more active, I would have a feeling to talk more about some of the things that have been going on um but at the same time like i don't know it's just tricky because like we all are in our own echo chambers and bubbles and like we mm -hmm. can't know every single thing that's happening everywhere this gets into the whole like booktube is so dominated by u.s yeah. mm -hmm. people right. yeah um but yeah it's like a whole yeah side. I I encountered this as an author too like and the, the pressure to speak about every single current event is crushing and it's why I'm basically facing myself off of social media I literally can't handle it um but also the privacy and authenticity thing I have a ton of stuff that I actively do in my personal life and I just don't want to mesh that with my mm -hmm. author life and like the, it's funny the stuff that's happening in the Philippines and also Ukraine um, this is all stuff very relevant to my day job. I have to deal professionally with a lot of this stuff. Oh, and so oh. I had someone, you know, on YouTube be like, how dare you not make a statement about Ukraine? I was like, I'm not even on Twitter right now. And why would I make a video? But I'm pers I'm, I'm like, statements are being made in things I'm doing IRL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's so anything is like for me to. At what point you know, then is the. Company. Yeah. you know the weird the the like instagram graphic yeah. we all share right about which is nothing wrong with some like some of them are very helpful don't get me wrong but i'm just yeah. saying like after every event there's an instagram graphic that gets shared the yeah. same three two mm -hmm. across everyone you follows stories usually i feel like and i'm not critiquing anyone who's done this mm -hmm. but you know it's it's not my personal it's overload style, personally um yeah. and i'm like you i I like to take action. Like I shared one and I was like, this is what I did. I called my reps. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or like, Hey, I donated here because mm -hmm. it seems like this is yeah. a good place to donate. Exactly. But like, I don't feel like I need to be like, this is what I'm doing in my day to day. Like as yeah. a, to be an activist or to yeah. be a participant in yeah. my community. 
I like if I feel like I want to share resources or like information, I will, but I also don't feel like I need to do it for everything because I just can't. But also, I don't talk about everything I do in my personal life in terms of places I donate to or like things I'm because because that to me feels weird and performative. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like always like like posting like yeah, every time just, I donate to a charity, yeah. like let me post about yeah. it on social media. I don't know, like that's weird to me. So I just don't I, like I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. That's how I tend to as, as well. But and then there are also just specific things where I, I mean, I'm not a political political activist generally, but where like it could create legal issues with my job mm-hmm, uh, yeah. if I, if I right. say certain things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Has not been cleared by legal at my company, even though. I don't represent my company. Like we know it's not that simple. It's it's yeah. kind of like, you know, Mara, you're careful not to talk about things that could n- impact your IRL job. Mm-hmm. So. But, and I mean, you know, I remember, Ashley, I forget what stream you and I were on, but we were talking about like, are you the same online as you are in real life? And we were talking about like some of the activism stuff. And I think kind of what we were talking about was like, if if these are things that are important to you, people know that about you from following you, right? Like people know, I, I'm pretty sure you can guess exactly how I feel about the stuff that's happening with Roe v. Wade right now. If you can't, then I'm happy to tell you. Um, you can <laughs> yeah. probably guess exactly how I feel about like what's been happening in Texas. And you cr- like you can, I am consistent with like my core mm-hmm. beliefs on yeah. and offline. So even if I haven't said something about a specific incident, like I'm, you know, hopefully I've put enough of myself out there that like, yeah, you can guess my thoughts. Yeah. And I, I think the assumption that like, this is exactly it is like, 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 I think that like, it be good for people to not assume that what you see on the surface is all people are doing. Like if you yeah. can, I, you know, it's like about, consi- I guess it's also just about like patterns mm-hmm. of behavior. Like, I feel like you get a vibe for like, yeah. <laughs> well, and posting something's always a choice and, yeah. and uh, meaning there's, perf- it's, it's performative activism essentially. And, right. you know, I'd rather be a completely authentic meaning uh, what I'm meaning to say, sorry, is you make a choice to center yourself in a narrative when you're doing on a public platform is what I mean to say. Right. Um, And I always like, I prefer not to, um, I I prefer to do other supportive actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is true too, is that like, it's like, I don't know if people always realize it can be painful and like emotional work to speak publicly on stuff. And this is also why, and Ashley, I wonder how you feel about this. Like if you feel pressure, because I know, like, I feel like people seem like they expect, especially like every time something bad happens that like people in the black community are going to speak on it. But like, that's a lot. Um, it's interesting because in my personal life, I had I had a conflict with this um, professionally about speaking about what happened in Buffalo. Um, and I think that, and I, I'm only going to speak about my experience being a Black person when stuff happens, is that I think sometimes there's this expectation for Black people to speak on things that have happened so that we can remind people about what it's like to be Black and live in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately we continue to lay our shit bare, re-traumatize ourselves so that people can understand what we go through and do absolutely nothing about it. So, you know, it. I don't follow that expectation. I don't really, I don't ask Booktube to do anything anymore. Like, because when everything happened in 2020, I called a spade a spade and I said, Booktube is gonna do what it's always been good at doing, which is flexing for a hot minute and going back to doing what they've always done. And black creators in this community have paid for that heavily. There are those of us who have 20, 30,000 subscribers and our views do not match, legitimately do not match the amount of subscribers that we have because it was alleviating people's guilt about how they felt towards the black community for y'all to turn around and still not do a single thing about it, you know? So 
I just speaking about this community in general, like I just don't, I don't have the faith about anything when it comes to booktube speaking about anything at any point because booktube as a whole community, I'm not talking about who I know individually because like I said, no new friends I rock with who I rock with. And I know what people do and what they don't do. But as a whole, booktube will share a tweet, share an Instagram post and like won't do anything else. Like I don't have an expectation. Like it's it's not about me having to know what you do in your personal life, but understand like I can only go off what you show me. So I see people talking, yes. but you won't walk the walk. So as a whole, like I just don't, I don't care anymore. And I hate to say that. I don't question. I don't ask. I don't, I don't give, I really, I just don't give a damn. Like I will say stuff to people behind closed doors because it's venting and I got some stuff to say after this, but publicly now i don't expect y'all i don't expect this community to say nothing because what difference is it gonna make because y'all will talk 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 but then you won't do anything about it so what's why would i ask you to Mm. share a tweet why would i ask you to talk on this or speak publicly it it doesn't it to me and i mean that's just me that's that lack of faith now like i just don't care like i'm just kind of at the point where like I feel like I love aspects of this community, this parts that I don't like, but when it comes to like real world life change and stuff, like, nah, I ain't gonna put my faith in my life and my well being in the hands of this community. I say that straight up 100. Like, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't because you've already shown, you've shown for years what you're about. So mm-hmm. let's talk about all this. Like, yeah. I, mean, I didn't want to get on here and, and do this, but like booktube as a whole, are we really authentic? I Even mean, are we really authentic though? I mean, it's a question, right? Like it's, and I think it, you know, some people maybe are, but like it's. As a whole. As a whole. Not individually, because I know, like, like I said. Right. Yeah. No new friends I rock with who I rock with. Like I know who's off. Yeah. No new friends yeah, is the merch worry. coming out of this live stream. <laughs> right. Yeah. I need a new new friend shirt. No new friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need it as a reminder to myself. Like yeah. seriously, as a whole, like is booktube authentic as a whole? Yeah. No, it's it's a lot of that fake. Yeah. It's slacktivism. platforming. Too many people mm-hmm. are and, and like I get it, it's platform, but like they're yeah. platforming hard. Yeah. And they're well, and, I, and I also think there's occasionally maybe not always, but I do think there's also cases of people who maybe, because cause I think, I would say like most of BookTube leans pretty left, but mm-hmm. I do think there are people on BookTube who don't, mm-hmm. but who maybe yeah. don't share that publicly because they don't want backlash. But yeah. I also um, think it's a problem with some BookTube people too. who do lean left. Author too, mm-hmm. too. I oh, do yeah. think that that is a problem. I think that people yeah. automatically assume that if you lean left, that's the that's the problem that right fix there. It, right. And I'm sorry, y'all, because y'all are all white, but white liberals okay. will screw you yeah. up. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. just, oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. like, wasn't that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Like, it's not like, wrong. It can be just as a white liberal. Well, yeah. 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 Well, I, yeah, I don't even identify with liberal anymore. I try to say leftist because, like, mm-hmm. yep, I, yeah, same. But no, yeah. but I, I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah, they hide their racism. I mean, like, you, is yeah, what you it read is, Sisters you know? in Hate too, yeah. right, Ashley? Huh? You read Sisters in Hate? Yes. And the book. See, the cool. thing that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what most white ladies, um don't want to confront about the reality is that there's not that much separating white left leaning leaning women from white mm-hmm. all right women um because <laughs> because like at the end of the day a lot of most white women are more aligned with their um racial privilege than they are with the fact that they have a marginalized identity as a woman like that and yeah. that's just like the bottom line intersectional yeah, yeah. well I mean, and a it, lot and, like and, and a, i mean just being honest it's like if you like like i think i i've always 
question some of that, but I think probably what pushed me as far as I am is like, and I, I, what's shocking to me is seeing like how many white women in my situation who don't get where I am, but like, but like, you know, being married to a black man and raising mixed race boys, like has pushed me so far into that being really important to me but then I'm finding out now on TikTok which I did not realize like how many white women who are in that situation who are still awful and racist and I'm like oh my god like how do you how does that not I'm like not, oh god, like please. anyway I just it's awful like I've been yeah. I did not know that was but, but like I do think like you have to do work like you have to be mm -hmm. self-aware and honest with yourself and read and mm -hmm. learn and grow and it's like a process yeah. I don't know. it is and it's never ending process no but for anyone who's watching and it's like who watch people's videos closely like watch a little closer you'll pick it up mm -hmm. you will you'll figure out you can see you can see it. i mean y'all like, you can see the transition from what people were doing in 2020 mm -hmm. and watching them now you can see think about all of the youtubers that were pushing black creators mm -hmm. or were pushing asian creators mm -hmm. what happened you mm -hmm. know like you it's small it, it may not seem like it's that big of a deal but small things that people do from people were reading all these black authors in 2020 here we are in 2022 why does why does snow you wouldn't yeah. like the transition is so it's to me it's so like and maybe because i'm looking for it and i've become so hyper aware of mm -hmm. it that you can tell it's not people don't have to say it to you you just can watch what people give you mm -hmm. and they will tell you the full story right there yeah i love it like look at their likes on twitter and their things on tiktok like yeah if they don't have those if, private if you can see them publicly yeah. like because yeah yeah. <laughs> you, actually, if you really wanted to know a lot about me, and I'm sure some of us, go look at our lights. <laughs> go look at our face. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, like, I think mine are private. It's well, and I think I don't want to. Are, but, yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't want to cast everybody. Like, how to say this nicely? Mm -hmm. Um, there are certain uh, associations mm -hmm. that certain kind of people have I don't like I don't know how to say this politely basically like we all have ideas like when you hear like this person is this yeah mm -hmm. you might have an idea or I'm like I'll take myself an example when you hear that I'm from the south you probably have an idea about what some of my <laughs> ideas may or may not be now if you watch me I hope that I disprove most of those but I mean hey I was born and raised here so I'm sure it's there but like you can make an association I think if you think through what some people's I think I'm picking this background up. and associations I'm... are. No, you no. can make some reasonable guesses, guesses that behind the scenes a lot of people are aware of that are true. I mean, was that big enough? Was that, that big, I big that was booking good. enough? That was, that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was big enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this spray. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> But for real, for real, ain't no point, man. At this point in life, I catch vibes that you ain't right. I ain't. And then also, who you mess around with, I promise you, the company you keep will have me like, nah, bro, you ain't good. And, and long term, good. too. I, I notice the people who strategically pick up certain type of friends, and then I'm like, oh, but they don't actually F with you long term. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> tokenizing. One, one black girl. I mean, I'm the one black girl here, but let's not. That's because not you were the only, only one invited. Because Jess couldn't come. You were. I three because, of you because all because were the rest invited. Come, okay. <laughs> and Bree had a birthday, so <laughs> Bree's yeah. birthday is today, and Jess is not feeling well. Ashley, I'm glad that you agreed to be our token representation <laughs> on tonight's panel. But no, really, like the company, the company you keep, man. I tell you, because there's some people that I have distanced myself from that I was, I was like, maybe I could add one or two more friends. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the company they kept, and I was like, nah, we back to no new friends because you <laughs> birds of a feather flock. Yeah. And I ain't all about that. Well, I'm, you know, my friend did, nah, bro. Like, nah, like you good. Like you could stay over there. I'll keep my distance. I'll speak. I'll be cordial. But the company you keep already is, is like, 
Because I just don't know how, let me see how big I can be. I don't know how someone who is so apparently opposed to black people. Like I have never seen it. This shit is crazy to me. Like just so like, it's just so obvious and you can run in the same circle as that person. <laughs> I don't care if they have one black friend, they're token. Okay. They, that black person <laughs> don't know that they're token. They're token. Cause ain't nobody told her, sis, you need to look who's around you. You the only black girl in the room. Didn't you hear stories about this shit when you were the only black girl in the room? Ain't no backup. Like, I just, if you if you can run with somebody like that, it makes me think, like, how are you willing to look past someone who would actively harm me? Mm -hmm. I can't I can't keep your company because that means you're not willing to they feel comfortable with you. And when people feel comfortable with you, they're willing to say and do things that they ain't got no business saying and doing. So then that makes me look at well, why do they feel this comfortable with you? Yeah. One black right. person, one black person, that's all you know. That's all only the black people you know. And I need to sit down and talk with said one black person since she was token. <laughs> right? Set, like set you free because child, literally, you always hmm. the only black woman in the room and you no, no vibes, no like. Yeah. Why is there no other black people here? I'm the only black person ever here, and you just, yeah, you okay? I, saw, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm dying right now because it just, <laughs> it's a reality. And I mean, if anybody ever wants to talk to me about it, I mean, it, it, what, what, what's gonna happen? Is it mean, nothing? Is, what, what's gonna happen? You know, I know, I, that's I, why I'm, I'm dying right, right now. We even had this conversation <laughs> offline. Like, it's, what, what you gonna do about it? Yeah. <laughs> but look, I mean, this is all on topic authenticity. <laughs> yeah, it I is. mean, <laughs> yeah, the choices you make and what you show to the yeah. world and what you can infer off of people. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I, this does, does kind of go to the whole token thing, but like, I'm also just wary of performative friendships. Like mm -hmm. that only seem to exist oh. in very specific ways on social media platforms. That is not yeah. authentic to me. Um, like if I ever see a Twitter exchange that seems like weirdly private, I was like, you must not actually be friends because this is literally what text messages or DMs exist for. Um, and I also want to say to your early point with vlogs, like for you, it's a significant other. My thing is when I hang out with other authors, I never film anyone without their permission because I don't mm -hmm. I, I never want to make a relationship feel transactional like oh I'm going to show you off that I know you here or there I don't like that at all yeah so. yeah it's it is weird I mean like and and I do think like the I don't know the friendship thing is complicated because it's like on the one hand you know people will talk about things being click clicky which I think part of it is like friend groups form and people only have so much bandwidth yeah. for like mm -hmm. yeah. people coming in. Yeah. Like that's like totally fine. Um, but it is also the case. And I know like I've seen authors talk about this I'm for, but, but like with other people too, like where, like I, like I also think there are people where they're like, Oh, I only want to be friends with people who are going to help me get ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then kind of drop people who won't, you know? When you see the sudden bestie-ism and, like, they're doing everything together and, like, just always ask yourself questions, I feel. Um, yeah, just just look at who and when they cycle, too. Them. You'll note it. Like, I mean, y'all have been doing this longer, but, like, I feel like you, you, you see the cycle. No new friends. We all see the cycle when it happens. And we go, huh. Because yeah, they're not, everyone's not actually saying no new friends. The same yeah, thing happens yeah. with BookTube, exactly. Yeah. Like someone starts getting a little shine on them and then certain people want to be besties with those, yeah. those people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Shay. And it's just, I don't know. It's kind of transparent, I oh, think. I'm sorry, Shay. Well, you'd think. I, 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 it, I, yeah. I have friends I worry about where I, I, I see them becoming friends with certain people. And I'm like, oh, don't. But then if you say, it's like when you say something about someone's boyfriend. Or That's partner, exactly right. And you don't like what their partner. What can you say? Right. And then yeah, maybe they'll break up with them. But if they get back together a week later, like, you're the bad guy. Right. And if someone actually is shady and abusive, they will use that against you if you try to warn someone about them. Yeah. That's a classic yeah. technique. 
Yeah. Well, and I mean, like, some of it also is just, like, I know we're saying no new friends. I do like making new friends on book two, but yeah. it tends to be, it tends to be friends of friends at this point. Like, yeah. you know, I'll, I have I'll a vetting system. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, somebody well, I follow can, like, needs to know them. Also, I, I mean, it'll be like, "Ooh, I'm stalking this person because yeah. they're so." F I have a friend crush on them, and they're friends with my friends, so I'm gonna try to be friends with them <laughs> because they seem like they're really fun. That's one thing. It's a different thing of like, "Oh, hey, person who just went from like five thousand subscribers to fifty thousand subscribers. Why don't you be my friend? Now we have no friends in common, but like, yeah, eh, eh? yeah." Well, I, yeah, I see yeah. that with authors who suddenly like are bestseller or whatnot. And you're like, oh, it's so interesting how all these people are friends with them now. It's really, really interesting. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> see, and like, yeah, it's hard because it's like to I know I'm not great at like. <laughs> like, I have a very limited number of people that I'm good at staying up with on a regular basis if I'm not collabing with them because mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm garbage so. and yeah, like yeah. not. So like there's people I still, you know, that are like, I would consider friends, but I'm like, I'm not a good, like talk to me all the time. Friends. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not really, either. Like I'm not good at that, but um, I'm a quality of time person, not a yeah. quantity of time person. Thank you. Know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But I don't know. It's, it is definitely. <laughs> I also just realized there's like a whole private chat happening. Okay. So, like, <laughs> sorry. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Um, Nothing's happening in that private chat. Nothing at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like, I think it's hard. So, I, you got to go. Like, have a kid out the chat, man. Get sorry. <laughs> I, I'm out. I'm, yeah. yeah, no. I'm, I'm looking at people. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, like, I do think it's, it's interesting. I, like, one thing that I will do sometimes, because, like, there will be people who I think, like, want to connect, and I'm like, well, like, sometimes, like, having people in, like, a read-along thing can be sort of, like, a, mm -hmm. a way to, like, see what the vibes are like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, if, I'm trying to think of a recent example. I'm trying to think of I'm I mean, I became friends with you, Bethany, through doing like the different read-alongs like twilight yeah. and stuff yeah um and some yeah, other ones yeah, before that and that's how i met ashley bethany yeah, and i yeah exactly it. like it just like that, that's how you organically meet people in the community yeah. i mean obviously when you're small that's harder yeah, to do um and the best thing there is to find people around your size to connect with and like the friend yeah um, yeah but not in the way of like oh well if you blow up i'm gonna ride your coattails because that's weird yeah yeah well it also just doesn't usually work anyway like no. you know what i mean like that's just not it, how it youtube, how YouTube works yeah. Work. yeah um yeah, yeah. no it doesn't no. yeah <laughs> that's not how the at least long term like that is not how the algorithm works yes this is also true like i like the fact that like i have friends that aren't all also parents mm -hmm. that is, no i'm great. i appreciate y'all for keeping the species going but that's not my truth like same <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Three. This is true. Like we keep like not being able to do stuff at the same time. We need to. I know. We need to collab. We haven't talked much in a while. It makes it hard when we're all. Yeah, like, Bray's so a good example of like a friendship crush I've had. We've been like we've been we getting there, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bree, Bree is the one who like convinced me to finally jump into getting into therapy last year. So, was... love it. Yeah, that feels like a Bree thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is i was like you're right i need to just make this happen and i did <laughs> yeah. i love therapy just a plug it's been great like so, so helpful I, yeah. I need it i i definitely you, need it you do everybody need, i mean i really think everyone should be in therapy but yeah. i'm biased my best friend is a psychologist. That's probably why I think that. Speaking of, she's my house guest right now. So I'm going to have to boogie because I okay. want to say goodnight to her before she okay. leaves. Um, but you guys are awesome. I love hanging out with you. I feel like it's been a while. I know. Speaking of just book friends. But it has. Hopefully well, you guys can, you, whatever happens af in the after show, let me know what, what the tea is. Because Okay. <laughs> we might have to move the tea chat to the Instagram chat. 
Okay. Yes, please. Yes, move your move your after show chat to the Instagram so I can pick it up later. And we're so authentic um, that we let y'all know that there are after parties. there are after chats. There are after chats. Always. Always. If you don't think there's after chats after lives, there are things you don't Ooh, always chat. After not uh, yeah. <laughs> Although not always. Like it not I mean, always. Not it always. Depends. But I think there will be often this time. Enough. I don't want to miss it. So please put it in the Instagram chat. <laughs> accurate okay. okay bye guys have a good night bye. have a good night that's so funny <laughs> let me stay in there <laughs> <laughs> I think she is in the instagram chat still is she's she or the, no i think she's in the original one but not the one that i sent the we'll have to go back to the here. original one I can, I can i can add her in it's fine and just um, <laughs> <that's annoying. laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, before we wrap up, I guess the, since we are book related creators, the one other piece of this I wanted to talk about, but we got pretty sidelined is, um, authenticity with reviews. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Wait, I'm supposed to lie? You want to wrap it up, Bethany? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is the topic. Oh, oh, the I'm lie. supposed to lie? I've been doing this wrong this whole time, y'all. I gotta go fix stuff. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, Please. there are mitigating factors. It depends. I, okay, I, as yeah, an author, Alexa, yes. I feel like, like you have to author... have... Well, and even then, I mess up all the time. Like, mm. I think I'm okay to speak, like, honestly about X, and then someone's like, you're evil. How dare... How And, and maybe they're right. Um, I try to read in... Like, I read what I like to read, obviously. Mm -hmm. And they feel pretty safe. Though... <laughs> will tell you uh, I had a non I, I did love the book but I had a nonfiction author like comment on my Goodreads review they didn't know clearly and it was a five star but imagine if it wasn't and it freaked me out a little I was like nonfiction supposed to be safe <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> yeah I but in fairness I tend to only pick nonfiction I I'm going to like I very rarely I very rarely dislike the books I read but I will say like maybe this is inauthentic of me Mm -hmm. I have had cases where I've read a book, a YA book, that I had nothing nice to say, mm -hmm. and I have pretended that I never read it. And sometimes that is, it is, mean, that is necessary, and it's slightly inauthentic. But um, I like, think that's I, okay. What would be inauthentic is if you said you did like it. You well, know? and that was my problem. I think it'd be worse I literally you liked couldn't it. even come up with a three. If I can't come up with a three star. I have to pretend I never read it. Yeah. Um, cause, yeah. cause, cause three, I still think three is really good. Like, it means some, I, you enjoy something, but it's not like your absolute favorite. Maybe there's one or two things, but mm -hmm. like I had nothing nice to say and I felt terrible. And so I pretended. I did. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that I think makes my dark secrets. Sense. That's okay. And I won't tell anyone what year it was. I don't want people to figure it out. I will say I, this, that people have recommended this book to me and I've had to continue pretending that I have never read it. Oh, no. So. <laughs> That's rough. Um, oh, five star because this book was such an important book. Oh, Lord. Yeah, we've all seen those. Yeah. This is, I, I just, this is I'm really bad because I really didn't know I was supposed to be lying all this time. <laughs> No, I I love I love the authenticity of people who are able to like Yeah, I mean it's very different as an author. Like so yeah. I feel like you you have you have to maintain some friendships sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um I would say and like yes, a I friend wrote a book, I would probably be like, I'm gonna buy this. I'm never gonna read your book though. I'm sorry. <laughs> um because yeah. if I hate it, I don't wanna have to yeah. say I hate it. Yeah, I have to pretend I never read it. Yeah. I have friendships like that too where I respect them too much uh to accept them to read me. I don't ask, I don't, rec I don't suggest, and, and I don't read them, especially if I know it's a genre where I'm less inclined to like it. I like, why would I mm -hmm. do that? So, yeah. yeah, I think it's like, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Cause I've, I, I've, I've gotten more comfortable being pretty honest over time, I think, because I've just been doing like been doing this long enough like I think when I started I felt terrible about giving low ratings I would still do it occasionally but I felt so bad about it and I just don't feel as bad anymore um I don't care <laughs> I've had to just kind of get past it because the reality is is like I know 
honestly, like there are a lot of authors who watch my content and like they don't all comment on my stuff, but like I know from different things mm -hmm. that they privately, like there's a lot of authors who watch my content. And yeah. so I just kind of have to be like, well, you can learn to manage your feelings like uh, privately. And that's yeah. just the reality of it. I've definitely like, I've, of course I've seen booktubers, <laughs> booktubers who don't enjoy my books. It's like, well, whatever. <laughs> as long as they're not maliciously hate reading me, which has happened. It's fine. It's like, whatever. My like, I'm not no, happy. Maliciously. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, you'll get views, um, <laughs> apparently. So see, I feel like it would be weird because I, I couldn't like, do it now. We've been on too many lives together that I would feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> Well, so unless, unless like, like, like I started like, reading, like I started reading your books before I knew you. Yeah. So like, I don't, I'm fine still reading them and reviewing them because like, I already know I like what you, you know, like I like your style. Yeah. So like, I'm not, mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I'm like, I'll have a good time even if I like, am not yes. like, you know. <laughs> I know like I'm not whatever. torturing you and that you read no. them all hey, but no, exactly. like I other people I was like, no, we're friends now. You shouldn't read and you shouldn't read what I write. Yeah. I mean you can if you want, obviously, but like <laughs> like Amara's it's fun, so funny. She's like, Yeah, I can't actually really review your books because it's a conflict of interest because we're friends now. I was like, I, I accept that. I I, I aggressively made y'all my friends. So, <laughs> so that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like it's one of those things where like I would probably be like honest but gentler if I had any yeah like where you know what I like I'm more careful in how I would say things if I had any criticism <laughs> me and Issa sitting here like, like don't give a fuck. <laughs> what me and I'm like light it on fire like, let's go I don't care <laughs> <laughs> listen I don't care. listen I love chaos <laughs> we know this it's fine it's true. It's, true. it's like a oh, soft yeah. chaos though to like light a book on fire when it's real bad sometimes you know yeah. it's like it's mean but like there are meaner things in the world i could do i am when i review i feel like my whole thing like i just did this video yesterday about books i'll never read I, I would say like you know there's some things are just not for me as a person and like yeah. that's just right. it and like i don't know like for instance bethany c morrow like we just don't like, I just don't think that her writing is that great. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like it's just, and she follows me on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> when I review a book on Goodreads, <laughs> it goes on Twitter. And both of hers, like, like I'd be like, it's a solid yeah. book. But at this point, I just feel like her writing style and me, we just don't match. Yeah. That's not saying anything about her as a person. I'm commenting mm -hmm. on the work itself. Yeah. I think when you get personal about the author, that's when things get a little dicey. Cause then you yeah. comment in on a human being and not the, not the work itself. Like, yeah, I just, you know, and maybe Alexa, you could speak to this better. I just, you know, I'm not an author, but I also would not put something out in the world expecting everybody to love it. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. Not, that's not the reality of it, but I think sometimes- but some do. But some, some do. do. I, mean, I feel the same way as a yeah. content creator though, right? Like yeah. not every one of my videos is for everyone. And right. I don't, I don't want to be everyone's cup of tea personally anyways because then there's a problem there is a problem <laughs> but it's yeah true. I just some authors I worry about them and like obviously things do get to me but I my main thing is if it's if it's a fair criticism I was like yeah, honestly, I'm garbage at that, right? I just don't like stupid ones and then of course I stop reading them. And by stupid I mean like there was one I read well now you know on my next one. Um it, it was a formatting error thing in the arc they, they mm -hmm. two stars because I was like, I'll tell the page setter that you were disappointed <laughs> with this one thing. Oh no. Okay. It was formatting text. And that's in an arc. Thing. But it but like, like in, in an, an arc. arc. And that's the kind of thing where it's like, but honestly, you can't take that seriously. Yeah. Some people do. I was like, yeah. you have to laugh about it. It's hilarious. I had, so I had an author who but <sighs> see, I'm kinda I can be kind of reckless too, like just don't come into my space and we won't have any problems. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that's yep. not, and I, I just, I'm very weary about interacting with authors a lot of times too, because of the fact that like, I feel like I have to be honest about what I like and what I don't like. And yeah. like, regardless of whatever relationship that we might have, which is why I tiptoe and like, I don't talk to any authors on a personal level mm -hmm. whatsoever. Like, I just don't because of the nature of my job. Mm -hmm. And also, like... We make it weird. It, it's weird. It's it's very weird to have mm -hmm. to deal with those circumstances. And, like, yeah. you know, 
for me, it's just like, and I have a very fast hands and a very quick temper. I had an author comment on a book that I reviewed on Goodreads and I had dropped the rating down because it was, it was supposed to be an erotic book, but there was no content warning for the fact that it was incest. And oh, I, remember that. Know, I remember that. You didn't know until you got to like the last page. And I was yeah. like, the least thing you could have done was said that this was twins right. having sexual fantasies about each other. And then them basically insinuating that they're having a threesome with a guy. So when I put that in my review, like I felt some type of way about the fact that like you didn't, cause that's my line for me. Yeah. Is that when it comes to romance, like I don't do incest. I just can't get past that. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like whatever you like, you like. But for me personally, mm -hmm. that's my line. So I wrote that in a review. And so she commented and said, it said that it's taboo and it's erotic. There's no incest. I screenshot uh, that shit so quick. And then screenshotted pages from the book and put it on Twitter. That's why I said, I don't need to get to know anybody because when you cross that line with me, I'll put mm -hmm. it on social media and then we can see really like, like, no, like, I, uh, uh, no. Authors, I, I genuinely think there should be like a training course, like a workshop that authors have to go through like uh, PR training. Yeah. Um, but I'll also say that this is why it's very awkward. I mean, YouTube is actually like weirdly not as bad as some of the other ones because I mean, a so few authors choose to make channels, but also either tube and booktube are actually pretty separate, like all things mm -hmm. considered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and generally channel spaces are you create you create a channel space on YouTube, people go to mm -hmm. your channel to watch content. Uh, we're, I mean, Instagram's had a bit of it and continues to have issues like the whole tagging authors and negative reviews on Instagram problem continues and TikTok on too. But yeah. TikTok is TikTok gonna, is... there's a storm coming yeah. because so many authors are using it to aggressively build their platforms and everyone wants to go viral. And it's really easy to see something negative about yourself come yeah. up on TikTok mm -hmm. and you can't control what you see as easily. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm worried. Uh, I the, it's really messy anytime reviewers who whose reviews are for readers, not for authors, and authors are interacting in the in same the space. same space. Yeah, and there's a lot of that on Ooh. TikTok. Yeah, uh, yeah, it gets dicey. Yeah, yep. like who do who do hashtags belong to? Is is a huge problem on Instagram, and ultimately they need to belong to the readers because you know there's more of them. But at the same time, it still sucks because sometimes I'll it's when you tag me, don't. Yeah, I the tagging tag. is the problem. Like the, the hashtag, tag. whatever, but the tagging. Look at this beautiful picture and really like <laughs> nasty things you had to say about my like, challenge. Why so it I feels so it feels so passive aggressive. I don't it know. is passive aggressive. And it's like here's this beautiful photo. I hated your book. It's like violence. <laughs> you chose violence today. Oh my god. And that's the thing. You don't have to like like my book, but just don't don't shove it in my face. And it's the same thing. Authors mm -hmm. owe the opposite courtesy. You do not come into a reviewer space. Mm -hmm. and comment I'm, yes. I'm even really wary when it's positive yeah um like of letting them know that i even saw what they yeah. wrote it's weird yeah. I, I try not to like goodreads reviews unless i know the person who left it mm -hmm. um because even like liking a, a positive thing on goodreads is kind of creepy in my mm -hmm. opinion <laughs> yeah i had an author do that to me once and i didn't respond just because of just like not crossing and it was amazing because he had um i had reviewed his picture but which i thought was really really great i i loved it um and i gave it a five star review and he said you know i usually don't you know this is not the proper etiquette for me to cross into you know commenting i you know i, I know i shouldn't do this but i wanted to thank you and it was like i appreciate it, but i still didn't even want to comment or interact with him still because I don't know, but just two yeah. comments on here that I saw um, I that were interesting. Okay, yeah, I like I'm not like caught up, but I did want to racism because I agree. Oh, okay, I'm not. Uh, yeah. it's, I, I'm Maya, like way exactly. behind. But, but for authors of color, that negativity is racism. It's racism. I, I, you can respond oh. if it's racism or okay. homophobia. Yeah. This that's is, in my so opinion. That's fine. That. So here's if the you thing want to about fight that, that, that I've that I've noticed. Okay, hold on. Where is that come? I'm so bad. It's at oh, 11. Yeah. 11? Uh-huh. On the dot. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That okay. is true. Okay, so yes. However, 
I have also seen some authors of color who assume that anything negative about their book is racism. And I'm like, hmm, maybe your book uh, is also... also seen, I mean, seen some authors use one marginalization to justify other... To, ju- to, to cover mm-hmm. things in their book that have harmed other communities. That's also true, yeah. We also don't love that. Yeah. I have seen that and it's been like, just because you have one thing doesn't mean you, like, just because you're one thing, let's say, just because you're queer doesn't mean you can't be racist in your book, for example. Yes. I've seen, because I have seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that, yeah. And then I've, and then I've also seen, like, like, I can think of somebody, for instance, who I read their book and I thought it was okay. It was like a three star. It was like mediocre, but it was a popular, sold very well. And their sort of response to any criticism has been, oh, it's just racism. And I'm like, yeah, or just like your book is fine. Oh, we're going to talk <laughs> offline about that for sure. Because I want to I want to know all the things. Okay. <laughs> I think too, it, this, it, part of this conversation too, and it's something that I've struggled with and something that I've had to really readjust my thinking to is that just because an author is from a marginalized community does not instantly make their book a five-star read. And if it's a valid criticism of the work itself, you have to take it as such. It is, it is a valid criticism. Like, you know, you had plot holes left, right, and center, but I can't give you a five star because you're a black author. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where that line mm-hmm. gets kind of murky because of the fact that there have been, you know, times when people have reviewed a book, given it a lower rating, and then said, like, you know, I couldn't relate, you know, like stuff like that. And I get that. Yeah. But I think there are valid criticisms of some books that people give even some books that i love Mm -hmm. and it's not anything like it's 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 worthy of whatever criticism people are giving if it's not based in racism or whatever ism that you want to throw out there but i think some people don't think that their work is worthy of criticism because of the nature of how publishing has been and their background and that that's also not a fair outlook on reviews well, either. And just because a book can't has like just because there are a book isn't perfect doesn't mean it lacks value. You know? Like mm-hmm. there can be a book where I might be like, okay, like the pacing was off and like some of these things had some plot holes, but there might be a lot of there still might be a lot of value in like the message mm-hmm. or like the mm-hmm. way they're depicting like marginalized characters. So like just because a book isn't perfect and a reviewer is pointing out some of the things that are, you know, like less than ideal doesn't mean they're saying your book is trash and no one should read it. Mm-hmm. Like so I don't know. I just like I think sometimes mm-hmm. some authors get that, but I do see some authors who like get very sensitive about that. I know I think about um an author I don't love, Jasmine Guillory. Um, and like the crit- critique I've seen from my black friends on her books, conversations I've read and you know watched and listened to about her books and like how her reps bad, like and that's something else I think about. Like I always feel weird. I'm like I won't, I won't really don't want to read Jasmine the Gallery, and then I have to be like, but this is why. Like so, I feel like there's that whole thing too, where like you know, oh well, it's a black author, we should just love it. And I'm like, it's fine if you like it, but like you also should be aware of the criticism from black women for her representation in these books. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you, Heather. Like, I'm probably, I'm. I mean, honestly, like, I'm likely to be more generous and really try to focus on positives if it is like mm-hmm. a book from a marginalized author. But I'm still gonna be honest, and if it's got issues like i'm gonna yeah talk about that too you know yes like the authors that get mad at three stars exactly <laughs> <sighs> yeah i have <laughs> beloved friends who feel that way who feel that way about four stars and i'm like i love i i have some people who i love who i i was like fine i'll bump it to a five but it wasn't technically a four for me love you uh because you just don't want to in sow that discord mm-hmm. in the room yeah Right. Yeah. That's, yep. I'm also very weary because of how Goodreads does. I don't know if you feel this way, Bethany, because I know you get ranked as well. Yeah. As mm-hmm. a best reviewer. Yeah. And that brings its own kind of nervousness as a reviewer because 
people can see. Right. And I feel like publishers also look at that sometimes and trying to distribute stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that makes me weird because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I wonder if. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if you would be more inclined to look at reviews, especially like the more likes a review has, the higher it sits. Right. Um, It's Mm -hmm. the first thing that people see. Yeah. So then if it's not necessarily good, then you, you know, like. People love to like the well entertaining one stars right well and this is why like i don't do the like the entertaining one stars like i do those so rarely i did do it for an author who is not going to be hurt by it like because i really didn't like uh and um andy weir's latest book so i did that yeah, but he's going to be fine. He's he does fine. not need my review and I don't really care. But like in general, yeah, Ashley, I do think that's a good point. I think I'm I'm pretty aware of that and I do try mm-hmm. try to make sure that I focus on some positives and like who might like a book unless it is just really bad. But like for the mm-hmm. most part, even if it wasn't for me, like I try to be clear about mm-hmm. like why it didn't did or didn't work for me. Um yeah. So hopefully it's useful to people, you know? Yeah, I, I always get nervous. I feel I've realized that lately, like how I've like now trying to write, even if a book is not like a standard, like three star, which for me is not, it's not the worst book I've ever read, but it's also not the best book. It's just a solid mm-hmm. average book. Mm-hmm. And even then trying to be so balanced in the review because of the fact that I'm like, I know where I'm standing in terms of how they rank best reviewers on Goodreads and that can get kind of dicey. Yeah. About who that, who that draws in. Right. I mean, I do. I also think though that like, like, like part of me also takes it more seriously that like, I need to be honest if I'm ranked as a best reviewer, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That Mm -hmm. like, like people take seriously what you're saying. And so I also don't want to like gloss over problems um, and be like, Oh yeah, this book is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then people like, Oh, do you ever feel (laughs) pressure from that? Prep like to have said that I really like a book and then people don't to being, being, being categorized as a best reviewer. Do you ever feel pressure from it? Um, no, my competitive side I'm loves done. it. Just like, can I? I'm, done. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, did I make it up into the 80s this time? <laughs> like, yeah, no, I mean, honestly. I don't even like, pay attention to the stat on Goodreads because like half of my reviews are like two sentences. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's because they only they only tell you the rankings for the top 100 in mm-hmm. your in the country, like in your country. Huh. So I was very excited when I made it. Into this. <laughs> yeah, it's for me. I think but, I get. I've I've gotten. I mean, I don't want to say I feel pressured, but like I feel like it's a different space to be in when you're yeah. sitting mm-hmm. at that at that ranking. I can because, see that. I think that's yeah, fair. it's it's it feels a little. In the first time that I made it into the global ranking, I felt like wow. it was a lot going on. I've never made it into the global ranking. I've made, yeah, I've uh, made it. Into you're, the global you are ranking. also like higher up in there than I am too. So yeah, and it was a you know, I mean, it's like you know, but see, I think maybe I feel a little bit more pressure because that's what I want to do. Okay. Probably, and I so see for that. me, it's yeah. like you know, I always say like booktube's good, booktube's good, but mm-hmm. for me, like. I want to do professional reviewing at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. So for me, like the ranking and the reviewing writing on Goodreads, you know, even though it's not where I want to be in terms of like who I would want to write for, for like a professional journal. Yeah. Still, you know, when you talk about like submitting reviews that you've ever written before and stuff like that. that. Yeah. Like, so for me, sometimes I do because that's where I want to go. That makes, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Um, whereas I kind of like, if I feel like putting a lot of time and effort into a review, I do. Um, Mm -hmm. and if I have less to say it's shorter, but some of my reviews are pretty long. It just depends. Uh, 400, 500 word reviews. Yeah. (laughs) Like a semi, semi essay. (laughs) Sometimes there's multiple paragraphs. Um, like I have, have you really? 
Not in a negative way. Um, okay. Harper Collins reached mm -hmm. out to me and asked me if they could use a piece of my review for promotional purposes. Okay, mm -hmm. I've had that happen once yeah. too, I guess. Yeah. I've never, never had, had anybody... a negative review. Yeah. No, I've never I... had a publisher reach out for that. I only recently had a, a publisher reach out to me for uh, ARCs. Okay. Like a big five publisher. Yeah. I, I mostly do digital art. So like, it's not just, a, it's just not a thing yeah. in my life that like, I'm, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. I've had a couple, but like mm -hmm. big one recently. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's weird. I have never had a publisher message me about a negative review. Though. Yeah. I don't never think, I don't think no. they do that. Yeah. No. Um, Aussie authors. Oh, sorry, from, I have had uh, authors. Wow. On negative. Usually they're yeah. indie guys. My mom left a review uh, for an indie book that she got wrecked on, like, a, a book podcast she listens to or something. And the author responded to the review. And my mom has, like, no, like, tiny, tiny Goodreads. Like, oh. and I was, like, she was, like, yeah, she then friend requested me. And I said, block her. <laughs> I was, like, just block her immediately. I was, like, what is going on? That is, uh, yeah. I think a lot more indie authors respond to reviews. Yeah, yeah it was an indie author, more. but it blew my mind. I was like, why are you uh, Well, and that's the thing. I feel like they're in for a reckoning. I think that that's actually the group that's going to have issues on TikTok. We're yeah. headed for a blow up. And yeah, it's with the indie stuff. Like, because there's already been some. There's been some, yeah. Some drama. Well, I mean, yeah. that whole no, we shouldn't be negative about books was like. That woman lost her mind. That was from an indie book. Uh, and any book inspired that uh, mm -hmm. little, little kickoff. So, yeah. yeah. Ashley, have you applied to review for Booklist? Um, no, but Booklist is one of the ones that I would like. Booklist and School Library Journal also mm -hmm. have. Um, yeah, you should do SLJ. If, yeah, I could do SLJ now. I just don't have the time. But yeah, my friend my, reviews for them, and she says it's intense. Yeah, like, it is intense. Yeah. And my manager had sent me the application, yeah. and I was like, "You, you, I work for you. You <laughs> know I have some." But you know what I'm saying? But like, I mean, uh, I think SLJ would be a good place to start for me, um, mm -hmm. just because of the nature of my job, and that's yeah. what I do anyway. But the dream is Kirkus, uh, mm -hmm. and that's hardest. Yeah, well. like Honestly. I mean. That would be fun. I would, I would be like, I would, I would totally write professional reviews if someone wanted to pay me to do it. Yeah, like cool. Kirkus, I mean, but their reviews are so, it's like a hundred words. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the snark sometimes that comes with, at least like, because, you know, I have to read reviews from Kirkus, um, SLJ, Publishers Weekly, um, Hornbook. I read all that stuff whenever I make selection decisions. But I trust Kirkus the most because I just feel like most librarians go with Kirkus when it comes to mm -hmm. reviews. And um, there are some snark sometimes, like like very like very very subtle subtle like, snark. Yeah, I mean so there are but it's there epic ones that are like lore in author circles. We talk about specific mm -hmm. Kirkus reviews, and we will yeah. quote <laughs> of other people's books. Yeah. Quote lines, they're famous ones. And in fact, some of the authors, like one is Ashley Poston, has like like roasted a line of one of the Kirkus reviews of her books. And that's that's one of the ones for sure. <laughs> I, wow. It has flown from my brain, but I do every once in a while I'll go look up one. I was like, oh, what was that? I won't give enough specifics for you to identify, but there was one where they just it was a sick burn. And every once in a while I go look it up because I can't believe that was printed and I feel horrible. <laughs> they do. It they was just cut. subtle. Yeah. And they do. I agree with Kissy. Like they do it so eloquently. Like you mm -hmm. have to reread to be like, wait, hold on, yes. was that shade? Like yes. you really have um, to, you have to read it. <laughs> I mean, knock yep. on wood. Every, every, that's the thing. We we all dread our Kirkus reviews. I'm I've been scared <laughs> three times. Like nothing awful has been said about me. I'm like it's the time is will come. It will come. <laughs> I, but Everyone I has to go through the Kirkus review. I posted it down the Kirkus middle, and I'm not mad about it. Yeah, straight down the middle. That's oh, me. Okay. Yeah, I, that would be interesting. I do wonder like what it takes to get into some of that because I don't know. I only know of one person who I'm like sort of mutuals with that does it. Like I know one person that reviews at Kirkus that like one of my friends is very good friends with. 
Do they like thrillers? And will they review my book? I'm kidding. Yeah. I like. I mean, I just it's in my to, genre. I, I feel. I feel like I, read, I just so. have to like polish off my my academic writing skills which i could do mm-hmm. i'm much more casual yeah. on goodreads but i can i can write more formally well, it depends what name. outlet you're writing for like yeah. my friend who does slj is like it's it's curation it's 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 all like do i recommend this for you know people mm. to purchase for the library and like right. all of her reviews are like based around that because she does ya mm-hmm. it's like specifically like mm-hmm. would i recommend this for a collection I, I love that though. I, I I love like reading is like oh, <laughs> it's because sometimes I love it when they say they don't recommend it for for a collection. <laughs> like oh. yeah, oh you can skip this one. I'm like yes, I, I love was, I'm a horrible. You person. can skip this one, adding this one to your shelf. So I'm like yeah, hey. wow, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, but but it, it makes a difference. Librarians mm-hmm. read those reviews, and it they, they le- read reviews legit impact our orders. They yep. do. They, they impact do. our numbers. Uh, they impact. Same thing with um, booksellers. Yeah. yeah. So they matter. They do matter. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do it because I I feel like I would DNF too many. Well, is not. I don't DN. I DNF a little bit, but I don't. I. I could... I, of course, wouldn't do it because conflict of interest. Right. right. Well, I mean, I, I feel like as soon as like I have um... is reviewing for the trades. There's. Because they'll they'll do very specific digs where you can tell they're a writer, and they're mm-hmm. like, uh, "I could do a better kind of vibes." Yeah, and I'm like, "Who are you?" I have you guys. I have not heard anything about this. Do y'all know well, what this first is? First of all, I don't really feel like the Marvelers is getting a lot of. Maybe it could just be me, but I don't feel like it's getting as much promotion as I thought it was going to get. Number one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Number two, I just started the book today. No comment. Number three, no, I have not heard about this. Yeah, what I I've no yeah. idea. Isabella, you're gonna have to fill us in. I don't know mm. what happened. Yeah, I don't know. Um, what I mean, I've heard good things, and I bought the book. I haven't read it yet, but I want to. Yeah, I want to get the audio from the library. Yeah, I'm listening to it on audio now, and I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna wait and see what you think of it, probably, and then get yeah, it. But... I don't know. I don't know. I read <laughs> I read two really really great books this week, and. I don't know how this one is going to um, the Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School top fucking tier book. That book was great. Really? Yes, it was. Okay. okay. That book was great, 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 great. Right. And so yeah. was the Harley Quinn book, Izzy. Okay, I was, was I was. That was, that was one that I, knew I needed or- to go check. It was a solid origin story. I would say I'm teetering between three and a half and four. That's, I mean, for those kind of books, that's what I expect, right? Like a three and a half. Like, I'm not looking for amazing. I'm just hoping for not a two star, like another crappy Harley rendition. The cameos are what's going to do it. Okay. The cameos are good. That makes me excited. Yeah. Okay. I know everybody's like, we need more info. The injury. I I, I think for me, because it very much so is. And I don't want to do this because I, I don't, because yeah. I'm still trying to navigate my family. You got to understand, like, I'm only yeah, yeah, about 15 yeah. years You're just old. starting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just starting it. And um, I think that it definitely is boarding school selection into, you know, different communities, uh, pets that are like soulmates okay that they take this you know what you know yeah, what i'm yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. know what i'm saying so yeah. like it i'm not far i think there is a conjure versus magical element there type of thing and i think that could be interesting but i don't i'm not sure how i'm gonna feel about it to be honest with you i don't know because the mm-hmm. setup is similar to other things yeah basically gotcha. they refuse to review it and then in the review of skinner and the unicorn thief which is middle of its whole huh. that hmm. that's interesting hmm i don't know i mean yeah like i did see this they don't necessarily do a ton of middle grade uh reviews but but yeah interesting i don't know, I don't know. I mean, Danielle lives in New York, so I do kind of want... I always wonder, like, behind the scenes, like, what kind of things 
effect stuff, but who knows? Yeah. How yeah. to become a reviewer on Kirkus? Freelance business. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think people do work for you, Ashley. I see. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that's funny. See, and that's going to be Scarlet. That's going to be kind of. I think that's where I'm like. I may struggle a little bit because I don't know what familiarity she has with it. You know what I'm saying? Whether there was research done or whether, you know, there's family history there, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I don't know, y'all. I I mean, I can't really give you... I mean, you're 15% in, so... Yeah, I can't really give you much. I mean, we're going off of vibes right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's not really much that I can really give you off of 50% in a book, to be mm-hmm. quite honest. Yep. Yep, yep. Um... <laughs> right. I've given up. <laughs> On Jason Reynolds? <laughs> yeah. Also thought about not getting a movie option for it in UK publication that week. I mean... Hmm. See, this is interesting to me. Like, I I get the movie option thing, but it's a never mind. Let me just buy my business. Okay. I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna. I mean, I think that a lot of foreign publishers pass. Off. Well, they don't I, want a lot of American stuff. They don't. I have not sold. Especially, I, for, I know that especially I'm in a different middle. situation. I haven't sold a single foreign edition. But it's, yeah, I think especially for like. YA and middle grade stuff like I just don't think yeah, I'm not familiar with the middle grade market however but with YA it's actually really hard but to especially sell. things that are very American like it's one thing if it's like yeah. fantasy that is like a t- completely different world like that seems to sometimes sell better from just what I've seen um, but things that like feel very American don't seem to that was the feedback I got on the IVs to American so well there you go. oh well interesting yeah yeah and see that's i think that's the and see this that's like a double-edged sword because i think that you know she should not be the only human that gets to write about a magical school right you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying yeah Yeah. we're overdue for a reinvention which we are which we are i mean we have like we're getting a bunch like amari and the night brothers um i just Witchlings by Claire Bell Ortega is a oh, good yeah. substitute as well. I, I also just magical. read, I mean, this one feels much more more contemporary, but like Wild Seed just came out. It's another middle grade with kind of a magic y school set in Louisiana. Um but I've been seeing like we're getting a renaissance of like a lot of black girl middle grade magic school mm-hmm. books getting published uh jl my friend jl oh yeah jl has one coming out i've heard good things about that yeah oh i have a copy of jl's new one coming out oh cool thank you for reminding me alexa (laughs) yeah okay 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 that's cool okay yeah i mean i do know like vaguely that she's got some connection to some like like she's i I don't know like i've seen her post some like witchy stuff I don't know, yeah. like, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That is true. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Yes, a Marie Brick too. It got it keeps getting pushed back, but I'm excited for it. I cannot wait. So. All right, y'all. We were at like an, a two hours and twenty minutes. So I feel like that is like <laughs> yeah, it's late for y'all. It's it's early, late. yeah, no. yeah. Um, so I, yeah, interesting. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. Um. So there you go. That's a lot of a mix of things about authenticity, but overall, I mean, I think. It's like we try to, but that there's a difference between authenticity and privacy, as we started out with. And, uh, you know, some people are, balance, all, yeah, it, it can be. And I think that, like, there are people who are more or less authentic, and you kind of 
figure that out as you go. But it does suck because some of the least authentic people do the best. People yes. actually like yeah. a curated persona, That's um, true. especially that on true. YouTube. And That's then, yeah. true. That is true. That is very true. Yep. Yeah. And then the bigger you are, the more people scream at you for not yeah. being authentic, even if you are being yeah. authentic. So. This is yeah. the thing is though, is it's like, but I like I I don't want to curate myself that much. Yeah. Like, no, I feel like I would be I see the appeal, but I would hate it exactly. Yeah. Cause yeah. like it can protect you in a certain on a certain level. Cause like yeah. if you know it's not you. Maybe you're less upset when people say nasty things to you. It is right. definitely harder when it feels authentic. But though at the same time, my thinking then is like, you don't like who I am? That's a you problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And yeah. that's okay. And it's a bigger problem if you are. Yeah. People who say that I, you know, talk too much, talk too fast. Do you get people to tell you to slow down in your videos? Because I get that all the time. And I'm like, there are other channels Again, like the not giving people boners problem, you know. That's so funny. Whereas, like, I speed up videos when I watch. I speed mm -hmm. up my audiobook, so I also speed up my YouTube videos. <laughs> but, yeah. That's so funny. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, this was uh, fun and interesting. And thanks, everybody, for, for joining yeah. in. Have great. a great night. And I hope That's this awesome. was able to give you something more fun to focus on <laughs> for an evening. So take care and we'll see you later.